nation destroys our generation. I don't mind. And good evening, everybody. Another fantastic edition and broadcast of, for Spline Designs Studio Saturday. And just getting some things set up here. Uh, trying to get these things uh, going on time, uh, as opposed to being late. So, uh, I appreciate just um, the patience, I guess, as far as uh, everybody joining in this evening for uh, uh, tonight's edition, I guess, uh, for our continuing work on uh, scratch build track, I guess, for the NASCAR Racing 2003 Racing Simulation. Uh, okay. So, some new, slightly new developments, I guess, have uh, presented themselves as far as the best ways to use the LiDAR information um, into uh, primarily the sandbox. Um, as far as when you get into more in-depth um, scans, you know, more detail into it as far as more uh, points into it, uh, is this as far as this them being so so many, you know, so much information that's in it, uh, it becomes somewhat troublesome, um, uh, depending on which track that you're trying to do. The, the track that we've been trying to do thus far uh, doesn't necessarily pose as much as that problem because the points on them are, um, are fairly reasonable. Uh, so, if anything, uh, want to make a uh, valid enough point as far as uh, just some of the things that you may necessarily deal with um, in trying to use the LiDAR information. So, if you happen to come um, in touch, that's probably not the right word, but as far as using um, some point cloud uh, LiDAR information that has a lot of points in it, um, it may behoove you, instead of trying to break that um, information down and put it in the sandbox directly. What um, you may necessarily want to do is kind of create a template of that information that's in the LiDAR. Because uh, the fact that we can't, th there's really no way to be able to put every bit of detail, regardless of the amount of detail, you know, points that are in the LiDAR information, you're not going to be able to get all that into um, the sandbox or even into the NASCAR Racing 2003 season simulation anyway. So, this is something that you have to keep in mind. What was really critical, and this goes all the way back to, um, you know, trying to uh, put together or design uh, the whole process is as far as a road course that has a lot of elevation changes, for example. Okay, um, not just to say as far as tracks that you know, uh, be it uh, an oval, you know, a standard oval or a roval in the case that we've been working on, but also uh, those types of tracks that do have those elevation changes and so on, like uh, thinking of Watkins Glen or Sonoma, for example. When you get into those types of tracks that have, you can potentially have a lot of uh, uh, point cloud information in the LiDAR, uh, it's like, it, it's, it's, 
it comes down to the point, like, what do you do with that data? And the fact that there's no way in any simulation to include Enter 2003 to be able to get all that information directly into the game, that's, that's out of the question. Um, even if you were to piece it up into a bazillion pieces or whatever, that's just kind of crazy talk, really. But um, uh, the fact that we haven't had, you know, any reason, I guess, to not... Um, as I bring this up here, we haven't had any problem with d designing this track as far as being able to get the LiDAR information into Sandbox itself to be able to use that information. Okay, this is not, and, and the point out of this whole thing is it's not always going to be the case depending on what type of point cloud information, you know, LiDAR that you're going to use. If it has a lot more information in this one, which this one was just, um, um, I want to say it was just under, or was either just under 3 million points or just over 2 million, which is quite a bit. But there are plenty of tracks, uh, uh, lighter information that you would use for tracks that would have a lot more than that you know sometimes you know ten times as much and being able to use that information I guess in you know in a reasonable fashion that's what ultimately um, is the goal I guess of this not only to um, the whole process I guess as far as designing a track for an inner 2003 simulation but also you know using as much um, real life information that you have at your disposal to include the lighter I guess you know more efficiently so uh, the fact that and I'm just going to touch over just a little bit as far as what um, was gone over from last stream um, I have taken the liberty of um, chunking out the lighter information that existed uh, for this build you know the lighter information here and, I've, and it has you know we have gotten it into sandbox that was the main goal at that point you can tell it's pretty free it's pretty uh, chopped up as far as the edges because of the methods we were trying to use and the fact that this the lighter information does have a lot of um, um, you know polys in it um, we also came to the conclusion that um, as far as being able to create a pass file, um, as far as that process is concerned, uh, the limit seems to be about 30,000 polys. Um, but keeping in mind uh, the 30,000 polys, um, you're, that's just to get it in the sandbox. That does not mean that's going to work in the game. So the fact that you are able to get your object to show in sandbox does not guarantee you it's going to load in the game because there's a lot more um, uh, static items you know as far as especially in race mode for example that uh, need to be considered uh, that the game has to load by default uh, that yeah you definitely have to consider um, is, is going on and that and that's gonna you know, so if I was to put this even though I've got it in sandbox for example um, if I was to try to take the same object, if I'd save this and try to load the track with this in it, as far as in a race mode, the game would crash. Guaranteed. And that's already been tested. I'm not going to show that, but um, uh, just, a, just a hugely, f on a, I, can't, I cannot stress that enough, but just because you're able to get your object in the sandbox does not guarantee you that it's going to load in the game. And... Um, yeah, just a FYI, I guess, as far as that goes. Now, the fact that we've got this model for our um, LiDAR, which is all of our elevation, and keeping in mind that all this information, you know, all this, uh, the level that we're at here as far as the, the track geometry splines, that's all at zero. That's still all at zero. So the fact that we have to adjust our X sections appropriately to meet up with this LiDAR and we can do that uh, moving forward I guess with this with this information here um, the fact that when we set the pivot for example uh, we 
set. I think I might have adjusted it in here, but let me let me check that. Uh, let me check the height data on this. This should be an already set to where this end of the track ha happened to be the, uh, the low point as far as the LiDAR information went. So as far as matching that up to our ground plane with our sat image, uh, we came to the conclusion that um, this end of the track, as far as LiDAR data was concerned, was the low end. You know, this was the lowest elevation. So that, uh, yeah, that pivot point, whatever, for this model for the LiDAR, uh, putting it in this format, um, that's what that's set up for. So if I switch this over to Object Placement View <clears throat> and then select this model, uh, I need to double check that I have okay it is it the only thing I did adjust was the rotation okay so yeah it is at zero so um, I want to say I'm just trying to remember I got to recall my menu let me bring up my uh, uh, track editing folder here for this build okay so I need to make sure, I think I put that pivot, if I open this up in here I can tell. Yeah, see this is not the right one, because the pivot I had over on this end, so this is not the same one. Okay, that's what I wanted to check, because I know I did do one as far as in max, anyway, that uh, the pivot was over here. So the fact that this one's got the pivot in the center, I know this one's not the right one. Okay, so let me switch that out and let me see if I have open another window here I'm gonna go to my where I've got all those items uh, let's go in here uh, let me load this one up yeah see now for some reason yeah, I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. Yeah, see, this one doesn't have um, this area chunked out. So this is an older one, I believe. Let's see, this one's dated. Just double-checking all my work here. Yeah, I do have a new B. Okay, so I do have this one here. That's okay, so this should be this one. Yeah, so I got this chunked out, but I guess I did keep that in the middle. Um, let me check the... <laughs> I'm checking my work now. So if I go back into my LiDAR, um, what I'm going to get into here eventually is just to show uh, somewhat the procedure that it would take, I guess, to create like a, a mold, I guess, of the LiDAR. Okay. I'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hide that. Yeah, I'll just hide that information. So this... I guess I did keep that pivot in the center. Not 100% sure what I was... Yeah, so I've already got that all chunked out, I believe. Is it or is it not? I gotta, I'm gotta. i just having to remind myself what I did, because I had... Uh, uh, yeah, is it... The one I got in here is all chunked out here, but I don't think that's what I got here, so I just, I'm just checking my work at this point. This is not the same one. Let me see if I got something hidden here. All right, that's just that. All right. Let me go. Okay, I think... Okay, so this one's just the LiDAR uh, before it did anything to the... Okay, let me reset this then. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and reset this. That is not what it is. So uh, what I did was I have that that scene saved with... Um, that's the LiDAR before it did anything to it as far as cut out any of the uh, parts, I guess, of the infield and what have you, so... Let's get back into here. Alright, so... 
All right, so yeah, because yeah, what I was doing there, and I, like I said, I'll already show that a little bit um, as far as making a spline out of that original. So what I want to do is use new booleans. So yeah, this is the one I want here. Okay. Yeah, this should be the one here. So this is what we have in sandbox and I did keep that pivot I guess at the center um, okay so I'm just from so this is basically a one-on-one -on -one of what we have in sandbox so the fact that our ground planes at zero much the same as our track geometry spline in sandbox and the lidar is at basically zero plane as well um, in fact, I've got this raised. Okay. Yeah, it is raised. So the fact that <clears throat> we, I guess that's what we had discussed, and that's what we were playing around with the idea of being able to put the pivot at the lowest point here and see if we were to just kind of play with this LiDAR. We can see that this is the lowest point, be it the fact that our ground plane uh, with our sat image, that's at zero. So if we move, you know, if we adjust the LiDAR up and down on this thing, we can see how much more this is sinking into the ground the ground plane which is at zero so we know that one's zero and being able to move that pivot to that point that was what was um, being discussed last time as far as you know adjusting that and getting it in there so the fact that I, I have not carried that over into this one here so it's basically I've got this hovering over. What you can do from this point, and it should not defeat the purpose, is do much the same thing as you would in Max. So <clears throat> we know that this end of the track is, and you could do this either way as far as just setting the pivot on that end or you know, to reference, I guess, the fact that this is the low point and put that at zero. Or you can just adjust the LiDAR model in Sandbox much the same way as you do in Max. So get this down to the same as you would in Max to get this at zero to where this is bleeding. Um, so probably what I would do and it's not going to reflect much the same way so what I would have to do yeah let me get this completely back to where it was okay so let's select that and then what I'm going to do is do effect pivot go into this and uh, I should be able to center the object okay and I think that should, yeah, let me go ahead and zero this out. So right now, the Z is at like 8.535 on the Z. Okay, so it is not at zero. So what I'd want to do, let's see if I zero this out. Okay. See if I was to use this model. So I'm just I'm just thinking out loud at this point as far as so you can see what happens if we were if we are to the fact that the pivot <clears throat> stays about eight eight point five meters above I guess the, the lighter information itself. So when I set it to zero it's obviously gonna sink pretty well, but you can still get a pretty good idea of how much lower it is on this end of the lidar as opposed to this. Uh, so what I necessarily want to be able to get is what do I need to set the LiDAR model and Sandbox at to get that? And the answer would be I'd probably have to put it at a, like a minus 6. That's about what I have there. So let me go into Sandbox here. I'm going to camera view. And 
let's set this LiDAR model to a minus 6 on the Z. And that's actually too low. Okay. Alright, so minus 2 gives us that result. So it's probably only going to be the minus 1. And what I'm looking at is how much this is bleeding through here. You can see these points here. So it's it's not off all that much as far as keeping in mind, once again, as far as the track spline information is actually at zero. So the fact that all we're trying to do is get the, the LiDAR information, I guess, to match um, that same that same amount there. And the fact that in this particular model that I have in Sandbox, it's not adjusted to zero. I could still do that with no problem, but I can still uh, fine-tune it, I guess, in Sandbox. So there's more than one way to be able to adjust uh, the only point that's the only point I'm trying to make you can adjust the the lidar model the lidar information that you have in sandbox now um, you can adjust that either in max spit out a new 3do bring it into max or just adjust it in max um, in sandbox itself either way so um, I'm thinking okay that's at a half a meter uh, let's do two five oh see that's already starting to bleed through as it is so it's not it's not that much off as far as how much I got to come down. So I may not even have to adjust it at all. And I think that's the conclusion I made up there. So that's only like a one thousandth of a meter down. So, or maybe a hundredth, I should say. There, It's not very much, anyway. And you can already see it's starting to bleed through. So what that tells me is I don't need to adjust this, this LiDAR at all. Be it the fact that our track spline geometry is already at zero. Okay, so that's why I think you know, I'm just having to recall as far as how I went about doing this. Now, like I said, that is one way you can do it um, as far as that. Or you can set your, uh, going back to max, you can set your pivot to that lowest point where that exists in here being on this end. And just that'll translate into the model directly and you can just keep everything 100% at zero. But the fact that you still, anyway, if you if you adjust, if you care to want to, if you felt it necessary that you needed to, you can still adjust the same way as you would in Max, right in Sandbox itself. So, um, yeah, so we're good on keeping this at zero. And what would have to happen, you know, checking all that out, this can stay at zero on the X, Y, and Z. And what would have to happen from this point, if we were to adjust the track geometry spline, is to bring it to that level. So that would all all these x sections. And we're gonna we, what we have to do next is get all our x sections defined um, as far as where the apron is and all that stuff before we even do that. That that's that would be the next step. So the fact that we're we've got the information in here for the elevation um, based on the lidar data in here that's that's uh, that's good to go but we did, can't use it just yet cannot use it just yet we gotta put um, let me deselect this and get back into the geometry editing uh, I guess I had height views on let me go ahead and turn that off for now don't need those just yet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off turn off the world underneath and we did, it's, yeah, it's all coming back to me now. We did have already tried to apply and saw what we could potentially do when we started applying um, X sections to that LiDAR data that's in there. So what we need to do is continue that process as far as to get um, all those appropriate in there. Because what we'll need now to this point, so we got this section, X section here and the one on the very interior. Now we need to fill in the gaps as far as um, you know where our banking is going to be, where it's going to stop, where the apron is, and so on and so forth. So that's what we can continue next before we can actually start adjusting X sections to you know uh, meet up, I guess, with the lighter data. So let's start that process. So we're going to unlock general geometry to make sure we can apply actually apply X sections. 
and we're just going to get right into it. Now that we know all that information as far as the LiDAR data that's in Sandbox, that's where we need it to be. So we're going to close that out with 3D SimEd. And that was just to show it in that, that format. If you have the 3D SimEd um, application, the, um, that one there that I just happened to close, that's uh, uh, version 3.1C. So um, I believe uh, Mr. Noon in there, he's got an even newer version, I guess, to take advantage of uh, some of the other racing simulations that are out there, uh, be it Project Cars and, and such. Um, feel free, I guess, to uh, purchase that, I guess, if you'd like. I have not tried those. The only one that I have used is uh, uh, 3.1.C, as I mentioned. So that's uh, everything... No, as far as that goes, you know, moving forward, that's my reference as far as um, if you have any issues, I guess, as far as using any other version, um, older or newer for that, for that matter, um, I can't necessarily answer those questions. So, fair mention there. Okay, so what I need to do is to start adding um, these X sections here, and what this one will represent is the outside banking so it's like where our wall is at which we already have here that's where that's going to be and then there's going to be another one applied that will determine um, as far as the banking that starts from the inside of the track as far as the actual racing groove and then where that'll stop on the apron and so on so we're going to this is what this one that I'm applying here will initially start to do so just to give you some sense of um, direction as far as what's going on all right so all we're going to do for now and this is much the same way as we've shown it can get very tedious um, as far as applying w sections x sections much the same process of just getting these to snap together and just like always it sometimes works much better if you zoom in just a tad uh, i'm going to go ahead and set these to mode absolute right away as I do these um, you may find it um, more usable you know as, just as far as to be more expedient uh, go ahead and just apply the X sections and go back afterwards and set your interpolation on your X sections I guess to mode absolute um, afterwards either way um, I do I would strongly recommend you know as far as doing a track of this nature at least anyway to set those auto mode absolute um, before you do any adjustments, um, particularly in your height view and what have you, so strongly recommend that. Okay, so we just want to get these to snap together, and sometimes they can be a pain. So you can see the little, I don't know if you can tell that, let me zoom in on this. As you do this, you'll see the little arrows, they'll tend to like uh, become little ragdolls of syrups. And then I'll just change that interpolation there and just go right down the line. So what we want to do is make a complete enclosure. Uh, this is our goal. We want to make a complete enclosure of um, of an X section all the way around the outside of this track. So for now, and we can adjust it in or outwards. You know, as we go, we don't need to worry. We worried so much at this point until we you know we need to we just want to get those at least initially applied in here and I think I forgot on the other one there to adjust that interpolation yes I did and if you miss them that's that's fine too you just have to be disciplined in the in the fact that uh, you need to go back through those and and uh, set those as well that's why I'd kind of went against my word there as far as to adjust them as I go. Okay. Um, probably another fair note too, if you wanted to, if the uh, background image uh, happens to be uh, bothersome for you, you can necessarily set, uh, you can turn that off, sort of, by just going to none, and then do okay, and it'll turn that off. So you don't have to have it hurt your eyes. 
uh, and you can turn it you can basically reapply it uh, once again so you still have the values in here as long as you stay in the session and don't close it you can still turn it back on so I'll go ahead and yeah so you can bring it back so that was probably fair mention you, you have the ability to be able to uh, uh, technically turn your background image off in fact I'll go ahead and do that just by selecting none on that like so so uh, in fact I'll probably put that in as a highlight let me clip that really quick that's actually pretty good information okay so yeah continuing on yeah like I said we're not really concerned where the sex sections landing for now we'll be able to adjust it later on we just want to be able to get this uh, entire outside area here uh, completely closed in so that we can move forward all right so it's X section snap these together change the interpolation and something I also forgot to turn on here let me get that really quick um, yeah get this going let's bring that over here for just a moment okay close that move this down over here okay there that should probably help the viewers a little bit more hopefully anyway okay just that okay so here we go these gives you an idea as far as what I'm what I'm clicking on as far as to get these motions these functions done okay so we're moving this way alright sensor exception just right clicking Okay, and once you get into a rhythm here, it goes, it can go pretty quickly, you know, doing these types of things, especially if you're zoomed in. I mean, you don't have to get right on top of it, but it helps to, uh, yeah. Alright, so, insert, X section, and, uh, like I said, uh, I will go over a little bit as far as, you know, the fact that we don't have the it all uh, worked out as far as the the best ways uh, to use the ladder information you know as far as getting it in the sandbox the only thing that's the only thing I have shown thus far is you know particularly with the one that we've been working for this build is how to get that in the sandbox but what we're coming to find you know as we've tried several different uh, uh, point cloud data, you know, and LiDAR information for different tracks, we find that the information can get pretty detailed. You know, have a lot, you have a lot of points. So to be able to get that, the, those more detailed uh, graphs of LiDAR into Sandbox becomes pretty difficult. So, but as my saying kind of tends to go there's more than one way to skin a cat so it's uh yeah there is a way to be able to still get some of that information off the lidar into sandbox uh, basically what that boils down to is uh, toning down and creating a you know basically a model of the lidar model that's basically what it comes down to I think I might have missed this one here. Oh, I guess I did get that one. Okay. Just backtrack a little bit here. Make sure I set that under interpolation correctly. All right. So we'll just continue on here. This shouldn't take too long. And this, you know, I've mentioned several times before too. This is where it becomes important as to how many segments, you know, segmenting your track and splitting and so on. You know, if you if you put a ton of splits and a ton of small segments in there, I guess to 
try to replicate I guess as much of the detail in the track as, as, as possible it becomes way more tedious doing this stuff because um, as I mentioned before you, 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 you take it a little bit at a time you don't try to apply all your X sections and F sections like in one segment and move that forward you know either append or prepend that's that's just much more difficult to do it that way I've, it has been done that way it has in the past but that's not the the most efficient uh, efficient way of doing it and this is why I tend to do these streams it's, it's kind of show in our own experience you know be it the likes of myself and or James um, yeah just to kind of show what we've come to find that works this uh, kind of sharing our experiences we're not saying in any in any any case that uh, you should be using these same techniques we're just trying to show that we've you know just trying to show I guess as far as what has worked for us and what makes sense and uh, if anything I guess to give a little bit more you, you gotta have a lot of patience doing this I guess that's another fair mention uh, anyone that is anyone that has even tried to build a track from scratch particularly in the sandbox knows exactly how frustrating it can be um, if you do not have the patience for doing this it, it's that's one of the main things you need to gain is patience because if you don't have the patience it's going to be extremely difficult for you Alright, so we're coming up to this area, and you know, the fact that we're in here like we are, uh, I'm going to need to bring this in and knew this from the get-go as far as how much this was going to be an issue, as far as how tight this is in here and how much information, you know, F section, W sections, and so on. So, uh, what I'm going to end up doing is I get here, we'll have to see. I'm going to have to tightly pack those in there. Because the thing with doing X sections is if you can get away with it, you definitely don't want to leave any open ends. So, like, if I was to stop it right here, for example, whoops. If I was to stop it right here, for example, I wouldn't be able to do anything with this X section. Okay, so whatever elevation, you know, the type of banking that I have in this one, there's going to be like an abrupt change in that. So that's something you take into consideration as far as when you're applying your X section. If you're going to leave one that's open, in, in this case, you definitely don't want to leave it here because like I said you won't be able to do much with this one with this section here because it's open you you need to have it closed in if you want to do anything with this one which in this case I would that's what I would need to be able to do so I have to keep those things in mind now, I don't want to change anything um, as far as the walls and stuff like that because we got those where we where we need them so I have to be able to squeeze this X section in this area. Okay. I'm just going to leave this a little bit room. Now, I don't need... It, there's probably not going to be all that much. And this is going to be interesting now that I think of this. Because on the actual oval, there's a slight bit of banking you know, as far as going across this direction. But the fact that... <clears throat> by na by nature, if you're gonna if you try to drive this course and try to go through this area, it's, it won't let you because this is gonna be a natural barrier and there'll be a a visual wall set up here or whatever so that that's all you'll do is sink into that you'll hit this barrier and it won't let you cross. So there's not gonna be. Uh, as far as doing it this you know this way we won't have the same amount um, of elevation so that's 
probably going to pose interesting uh, to see how that's going to work um, as far as being able to do. Um, we're probably going to have to keep this relatively flat going in this region because of how, because like I said, naturally on the actual track or whatever, it has some elevation going this way. This is the natural, you know, the normal, well, one of the configurations that they have there. So uh, the fact that we're going this way, if we have any elevation going here, it's going to carry over into this way. So we have to, you know, really finesse, I guess, the way that uh, banking is in through here as well. But the fact that we do need to have X sections in here to keep this, um, the adjustability of it in check. Whoops, I did a W section, not an X section. Okay. Alright, so moving right along. You know, we've talked before about, I'll kind of mention it again, um, kind of how much of a problem it becomes if you put X sections together too closely. It does not work out too well when you put them within close proximity. The, the simulation does not like that very much. So you definitely want to leave enough padding uh, in between that. You definitely can't cross X sections. Nor can F sections cross over. You know, like things like W sections or F sections can cross over X sections. X sections are pretty uh, are pretty static item. So it's like it's it's not only a barrier, I guess, as far as a natural barrier, whether you put something visible or not there in the simulation, but also in sandbox when you're applying, uh, trying to cross everything over it, being an F section, W section, you know, it's pretty, it's a pretty solid um, section. I guess to say the least, it's not, it doesn't give at all as far as... Alright, so let's get to continue with... And I don't remember if I'm changing my interpolation on these. Let me go back here. Yes. Kind of double check my work there. Yep, so I'm just going to continue on this path. Closing this in and keeping in mind this is still just the one area. This is going in this direction before it comes back out. And what I mean by that is if, yeah, the fact that we're still going in this direction until we come back out this way. So that's why I'm trying to close this all in between this innermost and that outermost. We're, we're trying to define that. Uh, uh, the more I think about this, I may not even have to go all the way through. But the other thing that I guess that I consider... In applying these types of things, there's going to be curbing and whatnot through here. So, one way or the other, the this this um, this X section that I'm applying here is going to be, become useful in some fashion. So, I'm just yeah, I'm not trying to talk myself out of doing that. I'm just saying some might necessarily find it necessary to just go ahead and say well we don't I don't need it that far into the infield you know I'll just let it float free there <clears throat> what I would do just for the sake of sake of it go ahead and just put it in there and if you find you don't need it you can you can chunk them out afterwards it's much easier to do it that way than it is to that, and again, that's just kind of my own opinion. So, all right, change that interpolation. Okay, let's continue adding X sections here, and we're well into the infield at this point. Okay, change the interpolation. going along fairly reasonably so far it's being it's being kind so I don't have too much of a problem with there's a lot of clicking that's for sure but this is where you can really get 
you'll fine tune it as you're going around here you get an idea if I had the background image in there uh, in fact I can bring that back real quick you can bring it back anytime you want actually as long as you're in the same session we'll just bring it back you can see where you're at and potentially what you may have to deal with as far as accent like I said there's curbings and stuff in in a lot of the, in some of these areas so you'll get more of an idea of how that's going to become useful so there is that use it back in here yeah so you can see how much more e more much more easy it becomes uh, to move these things around as you zoom in on it more so I'll just do that. Do axes. No, just continuing to add X sections. Change the interpolation. Okay, I'm trying to leave a little bit of. So I'm going to have to put another one on this side. And again, that's just to keep them in, that's how you pair up your X-sections as far as to start and stop, I guess, uh, any level of um, elevation. Um, just like your F-sections, when it starts, it goes from inwards out, in that case. Because um, it's a uh, bank on the right, so like, if you once you start, and it'll make more sense, I guess, once I go into the height view and get all these in here. It will make more sense but there is a start point as well as an end point and the fact that the way this is right now for, without having another one here if I was to apply elevation to it it would stop here so like if I you know put a 45 on this for example at this point um, that 45 would go start at this point at zero and go up to 45 say for example or vice versa that's that would be the start and stop point of it so and that's not necessarily what I want because uh, that's too wide of an area I guess to and like I said it will make more sense uh, once we start applying elevation to the X sections once we get these all applied see like in here this is gonna be some curbing that exists here so I may uh, find myself adjusting uh, this X section in here I'm not going to mess with it right now uh, but I might need to adjust some of that to take advantage of putting some curbing in here so I'll have that option like I said I'm not going to worry about that too much but that's something just to kind of keep in mind Once I get this all in here, I'll be able to adjust things like that. Now, <clears throat> and where it becomes a, little, a bit more um, useful, I guess, as far as using the inter other interpolation interpolations here, as far as left and right and forward and back, is is, is on such things like that. Um, so instead of having to uh, put which it'll that's probably what I'll end up doing anyway, is I'll probably put another X section in here. That'll be the start of it, the end of it, and it'll be it'll. I'll have an X section basically on the inside and outside, so I have a start stop on just that curving, for example. Um, but it does sometimes work better if you use the left right or the uh, forward back on those types, depending on which way the curving's going. So, alright, so we want to bring this here. Let's keep going with this for now. Don't want to get too sidetracked. But just in an effort to keep everything relatively at zero, that's why we're putting the mode absolute um, interpolation, I guess, on these for now. Alright, so let's put that mode absolute on there. Okay, I don't know why I keep getting the urge to put a W section. You need to stay away from that. Okay, so yeah. Now we're coming back. We're 
moving towards the, you know, coming back out onto the, the main oval. Kind of deep into the uh, infield part of the course. Oops, get these two inner, whoops, only two interpolations there. Alright. Yeah, see how these, some of these sections are much bigger. That just makes it a ton easier. to manipulate these, you know, as far as just to kind of move along with it, too. And not have, like, so many small segments. Yeah. Scared of Jesus, man. Mitchell Collins. Thank you for the follow. Glad to have you. Welcome to the Rock Nation. Uh, glad to have you. I hope you enjoy it here. You have... If you like you have any questions, feel free to uh, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them for you as far as what we're doing here today. And time flies when you're having fun. Almost, uh, let's look at the time there. We have time there. We're already almost an hour into the stream. But uh, we're off and running. Trying not to waste too much time, I guess. I know I had quite a bit of explanation. Um, at the start of the stream. So. Alright, so. Insert. Alright. Yeah, these are, these bigger sections here go along quite rapidly. Yeah, see, be it the fact that I will probably end up adjusting some of this as we go and uh, kind of line up more with uh, we did have to do some adjustments I guess to try and get this area tweaked out and such so uh, there will probably be s several adjustments that will be made I guess as this, go as this continues so alright so Again, trying not to get sidetracked as far as trying to do something, uh, you know, do one process at a time. That's part of being patient. You know, with that, you will find yourself at times, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, do other things as you do it, you know, as you go along as far as doing a particular pro process. And don't want to do that. Yeah, don't get in the habit of doing that. Get out of that habit. Because that'll... <clears throat> that can run into problems for you later on. I just speak from experience. Uh, okay, next section. So now we're coming back out under the main oval. Okay, so yeah, we're just continuing to follow. We need a little bit of gap. A little bit of a cushion on between what we've already got there. Okay. Yeah, so now we're coming back out back out on the main oval. And you know, we kinda went over last week as far as how uh, we would deal with this uh, dead space in here, as far as uh, con connecting this wall with the 3DO. So uh, the fact that you don't really need to have that 3DO there, I guess, for the track to be functional. Uh, that would be more or less of an aesthetic thing there, but uh, the fact that we'll have... We'll probably end up putting maybe uh, one W section in there. I'm not sure yet. That still needs to be tested. Um, I'm kind of uh, thinking we'll, uh, we'll have enough there, I guess, as far as um, this outer next section here that'll be a natural barrier so like I said that will require I guess some testing to make sure that's gonna work in that fashion all right and we're getting pretty close to that to be honest you know as far as just to go into testing mode uh, within the simulation itself to uh, be able to do that Alright. Okay, 
absolute. Trying to make sure maintaining enough uh, cushion, I guess, on that. So we're going to bring this out here. Yep. Just follow this the same. Now, this one here, it's probably fair to mention. We want this one actually probably to... Yeah, so let me adjust this one. This this one here, we want that to be closer to the wall. So as close to the wall as we can get here. And we'll probably have to put another one in here, I guess, to uh, get that to function. Because this is more or less going to be kind of a dead space here. But we need this in here. So we'll probably have to, yeah. Because we want to deal, we want to get the proper amount of banking, you know, coming off of here. So when they come like out on the track, it's, you know, that's what the actual banking is in this area. So that might be a little interesting. Okay. Just, again, just kind of thinking ahead as far as not trying to do anything about it just, just yet. But just kind of keeping in mind as far as what will uh, potentially need to happen there. Okay. So I'm going to try and keep this one here at least as close to the wall as possible without... Um, see, this area is going to be somewhat of a runoff, so they're going to come up here. This area is going to be potentially raceable. So I want to keep that in mind as far as how I apply the exceptions here. So I'm just going to kind of feather this in here a little bit. And again, just thinking in terms of this is going to be the banking on the outside of the wall, you know, on the back side of the wall, going up to it. So I'm still going to have to put um, an X section in there, I guess, to deal with the banking. So this might, in this area, might tend to be a little unnatural, you know, as far as the way this build goes. Uh, there'll probably be some banking here. You know, to, to get the banking that we need here, there's probably going to be banking that exists here that's probably not there naturally. Um, whether or not that'll pose an issue, we'll have to see. So, that's all going to require testing, of course. So, uh, the fact that we have this area as we do here, um, this, this area becomes very treacherous I guess as far as designing a track of this nature as far as like that and that's kind of what I had already anticipated I guess going into it initially but um, how to overcome that you know to, to make this as um, look as natural and even function as natural as possible that's uh, that's what we're trying to uh, convey I guess in doing these streams so all right, so just continue going on, not trying to get sidetracked again. Bad idea. Change all these to mode absolute. Okay. And just, not, I'm trying to give it some room, you know, just, um, like I said, this is going to be on the back side of the wall as far as that, that elevation until it gets to the wall, and then kind of be a peak, I guess, if you will. That's where the wall would sit, if you can imagine that. So, all right, just get these. This is going along actually pretty quickly. I, I shouldn't say anything because then if I say something, then that's when it, it starts to fall apart. But uh, it is relatively going pretty quickly. Let's hope that continues that way throughout the duration. Alright, so I'm just going to continue on. I'm changing the mode of absolute as I go. Okay, so as we come up, we've, we're, we're getting into these bigger sections now, so um, as we approach this, we'll be able to close this line of X sections anyway. Did I close that one? Nope, I didn't. I missed that one. Whoa, crap. I just deleted it. Gotta be careful what I'm clicking on. We can bring that back, though. Mode absolute. There we go. Just missed that one. And 
<clears throat> as I've already said, it's not important as to where uh, this X section is landing. It's, all I'm trying to do, for the most part, is keep it. Uh, this would be the back side of the walls in comparison to the background image, so I'm just trying to keep it away from that. Um, as, as far as how far it is right now, it doesn't matter. Uh, those will get, that'll get adjusted, I guess, later on. All right, so we're getting there. We got these bigger sections now. We got that one big one in the back stretch. Okay. All right, this one I think is a pretty big section here. Doesn't do any good, I guess, to get too impatient with doing this because it's hard to accomplish things, I guess, when you don't have the patience. Alright, so X section. Yeah, we're definitely getting there now. We're getting there. Yep, yeah, we started up in turn three. And. Definitely want to keep in mind we are not at the point of being able to apply any type of elevation change yet. Um, we want to get those primary X sections applied first as far as that defines um, on the outside of the wall, the apron in particular. That's, that needs to happen first before we do anything as far as applying elevation and firstly being able to uh, use our LiDAR data I guess as far as to be able to alright so thought I had a little bit more done than I had here but that's that's okay uh, this is turn three right here So I must have been more in the middle of three. Wrist is already starting to get a little tired. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Let's give it a break a little bit. Um, something you know, some, and I've met, uh, haven't mentioned this like, I've seen a couple times, uh, but the fact that um, I have applied, um, if you've got the uh, better t uh, Twitch TV emotes. Um, apply to your your browser. Um, you can do the. Let me put these in here. Um, I put at least one other emote in with it, and that's the um, the crossed fingers. So um, if you necessarily want uh, to help me cross my fingers, I guess as far as when I'm doing these saves, if you will, you can feel pre feel feel free to put in rock x fingers. And it'll bring up the cross fingers emote. So um, I failed to mention that I guess a couple of different times um, than the last two times, but I've had it up there for quite some time. So figured take a break, I guess, for a little bit, I guess, and kind of relay that information, I guess, to the viewers. And um, I have necessarily considered to apply uh, more of those types of emotes. if they so call for it but I figured that one was seemed pretty appropriate I guess for doing this type of work but um, it also could be used potentially for uh, doing things in Max and such as well okay oh, okay I see what I did I see what I did I was gonna say where is that doggone thing there we go so there's that one here so what I can do, let me delete these. I was going to say, I didn't think it was... Alright, no problem. So what I'm going to do is just delete those. Yeah. And then just connect this one. Bring this in. Like so. Yeah. Zoom in a little more. Okay. So now what we can do is I can move this stuff in here like so. Now I can just kind of loosely adjust these 
and get them a little more uniform. We don't need them right on the back of the wall, but we want them a little closer. Yeah, so this is not too bad. Yep, just kind of feather this in a little bit. And they can be adjusted as you go, but that should be adjusted that. So what I'm going to do at this point, now that I got that completely enclosed, so I'm going to save it. Uh, in fact, what I'll do first is I'll bring the background image back. I already had it in there, my bad. Uh, what I don't have on is the draw wheel underneath. There we go. That's what I wanted. File, save as. Do that as a new PDF. PDF, yeah. So I'll do this as a lighter C. And it's going to verify that that actually saved in my track edit one, and that's right there. So we're good there. Okay. Good to go. Now, let's turn that back off just to make it a little easier, I guess, to look at, you know, to view the uh, background image a little better. So now we need to do we need an X section that's going to be closer to the wall than that one. Than, we, than this one we just put. This one here is going to be our stop point, I guess, as far as the back side of the wall. So the fact that we'll have elevation um, starting from there, go down to that, and vice versa. So we're coming up to the wall, and then over the wall, and then to the wall, and then to the apron. So we need at least two more sets of X sections uh, to define uh, our apron, our racing surface, to our wall, and then the back side of the wall. So at least two more runs of X sections. So, what I'll do starting here, now that I got that saved, is I'm going to start with, so I'm going to move this out a little more, just to give that a little bit more padding. We don't need this one that close. I need to put another X section in here, closer to this wall. Now, I don't necessarily, just yet, want to snap that, I guess, to that W section. I want to leave it close to it but not right on top of it. We're going to leave plenty of padding between these types of things un until we're 100% satisfied you know as far as applying textures and what you have you with them but just to explain what these X sections are going to potentially be used for so again the way this would work if I was to apply um, elevation to this one, it would stop here. So this would be our, my stop point. So if I did it from here to here, this would just keep continuing, you know, from this point to this point. So these are how those X sections work. So if I was to apply, again, as I was explaining earlier, if I was to apply 45 degrees at this point, it would carry all the way over to this point. There would be no cutoff. So that's why we would have to put um, another set in here to define the, the apron as far as that transition off the banking onto the f relatively flat on the apron. And that'll be the next set of X sections that we'll apply. So just to give you a sense of flow, I guess, of how this works. All right, so insert. So we're just doing much the same as we did uh, with the one with the set of X sections that we just did only we're going to put this a little bit closer to the wall and not snap it to the that wall section yet just yet gonna leave a little bit of cushion a little padding and use it a little bit more and what I haven't been doing is adjusting my interpolation just make sure okay yeah this one I missed and like I said, you can you can adjust those after. Uh, you don't have to do that. I just was trying to get into the habit of doing it right away, as opposed to later, after I was done. Uh, and once again, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the background image. It's getting kind of hard to see. So if I go into background image and just put that to none, 
already shown this how to do that there so now I can just go oh this one's not even closed in look at that missed attaching this so we can fix that yeah so that's something else you can do I guess as you're going along here any untied stuff that you have there now granted if we were to try to test that in the game there that probably wouldn't cause too much of a problem you would have definitely seen that because um, we have texture applied to that I believe let me double check that yeah there's texture applied to that so you would have necessarily saw that that gap in it if I was to I've already done closed it up but you would have seen that for sure okay I'm trying not to adjust that too much and there let me put that I moved that W section I didn't want to do that <laughs> I just want to double check that really quick to make sure I did not move that too much okay that's not bad yeah you can see how kind of difficult it gets to to see I guess what you got going on there if you got that background image on sometimes let's go ahead and turn that off the fact that I know this is a wall and I don't I just want to get close to it but not right on top of it definitely don't want to move that W section too much okay want to maintain the integrity I guess of that um, track spline geometry for now okay just move it right along okay I'm hoping this is making a little bit more sense as far as you know the the whole process I guess of doing this and why you wouldn't want to apply all this information on your initial um, track segment you know as far as uh, pending or prepending you know the fact that it's much much harder to deal with you know as far as to manipulate the segments if you've got all that information in there right away um, you have much more control over doing it this way because then you get a sense of you know what's going on and I know a lot of the initial tutorials that are out there in the form of text that is out there for you know designing a track there it does go into you know, it tells you whatever to, you know, apply your your walls and your fence and all that stuff right away. Uh, again, as far as when you're designing something from scratch like that, that's not necessarily the best approach to do that. And you may be tempted to do that, and you can feel free to do that. But um, what it really boils down to, especially trying to get things lined up I guess to a sad image you know a background image um, it just makes more sense to do it this way one step at a time one layer at a time and then at any point once you get past this point that I'm working on here then you can you have the option to be able to uh, test it in the game you know at least in testing mode even without having uh, the LPs for the AI and what have you, so just to see if <clears throat> what you've got going on is is actually gonna fly. So okay, yeah. So the fact that I've majority of the smaller sections are on the front stretch here, which is not a terrible thing. But I try to keep those to a minimum as much as possible. We've already discussed the importance, I guess, of that. Um, okay. Yeah, so if I, I tend to go uh, a little bit silent there, I'm just trying to stay somewhat focused, I guess, on what I'm doing here because I don't want to mess up anything that I've already got into place you know that I want to necessarily keep where it's at for now 
Oh, finding myself having to just stretch the fingers a little bit because that does get a little bit uh, tedious on the uh, on the fingers there a little bit. I'm grab me a drink here. You'll find yourself taking breaks a lot. You should anyway. Um, as far as it goes as far as, you know, you want to get something done, you know, fast. And trust me, I've been there. It's like you want it done like yesterday. But, um, again, it comes down to that patience. Need patience. If you don't have the patience, it's probably not going to turn out very well for you. Uh... And I would hope, I guess, some of the uh, techniques that we've shown here do necessarily, you know, bode as far as, like, the type of track builder you want to be. Because, um, let's face it, you know, we'd like to have plenty of tracks done, but um, at what quality? I guess that becomes a question. I'd, I would much rather prefer, I guess, more quality tracks than garbage tracks, you know, tracks that have been just, you know, whipped together, I guess, very quickly, just to satisfy, I guess, the need to have it, you know, have something that's more modern, okay, so, we're going to be getting into the infield here again, and just like before, we're going to need to uh, leave some room on, you know, how close it is, I guess, to any F or W sections for now. We don't want to put it right on, have it snap, I should say, to any of those types of items as of yet. And there we go. We got rid of that W section. You know, the fact that these uh, different lines are color coded, you know, kind of gives you an idea. So, the fact that X sections are red, W sections are blue, it's kind of no denying which one you actually did put in. Curious to see, I haven't come across any more. Uh, Walls, W sections there were unclo not closed in. <clears throat> All right, we're starting to come to that area. Yep, we're getting there now. <clears throat> Where we've got that, and I, this one I should, yeah, okay. In fact, I can't mark that one as a cladium. That's okay. Not nah, concerned with that. That's not something that's visible. And be it that this is on the back side of the wall. Yeah. Um, more absolute. Just moving right along. Okay, so here we are. At this dead point here. So. Um, where it becomes I might be able to stop that one there but that I think I'm going to have to go at least one more because again like I said this is this area naturally going you know if it was to go all the way through here <clears throat> this has a certain level of banking I guess off the wall you know going towards the apron so if I was to stop this right here that might bowed as a problem here so I might just go one more X section just so I can feather that and I, <clears throat> I'm getting the impression that this is probably going to come and become unnaturally unnaturally uh, banked you know but the fact that it's probably going to be more noticeable coming out this way than it is this way because primarily you're going to be racing 
you know where the center line is here so and again that's <clears throat> the only way we're going to be able to know but it's just kind of getting an idea of like I was mentioning earlier as far as how these X sections work um, as far as if I was to leave this one hanging and didn't put that that would be an abrupt stop in there so if I apply banking to this that banking is going to carry over into this section I wouldn't be able to do anything with it if I was to um, stop it right here the banking would be here and would just kind of carry into that and that's that wouldn't be favorable that'd be very noticeable as far as so the fact that I'm going to put one more in here to potentially be able to uh, feather out this um, uh, banking that was just in, in this X section you know with, with having this one here that'll give me that adjustability with that oh, and I hope I explain that right you'll be able to it'll make more sense actually uh, once I get to the the height view as far as when we start applying but it makes sense in my head let's put it this way I just the only thing I can say for certain if I if you were to stop the X section here and apply any level you know if it's anything but zero and it has any level of uh, elevation change here it, it's gonna be very noticeable on the section if I didn't put this feather in there this is serves as a feathering X section here um, all right so <clears throat> that'll be good for there uh, now where I'm at is I need to yeah I need to zoom in on this and continue uh, I just got to get my bearings here again we're good on that we can we need to still create an next section to go against this wall here so uh, now I'm just debating whether or not I should just go ahead and carry this all the way through here because <clears throat> like I was saying what okay this one just to reiterate this X section is here. This is basically uh, why is it not selecting there? There we go. So this X section here would be considered our outermost X section as it does here. So that's what you have to keep in mind. Even though that it's so close, I guess, to the actual racing surface, the fact that this would be considered your outermost X section for this area. Okay, so that's kind of like a static stop point I guess for any type of um, X sections that you put in at this point in other words you can't do anything with this X section yeah the only thing I could do is move this in further and put another X section and so on this becomes just a stopping point so there's really nothing you can do with that as far as applying X section you know uh, elevation in there I can between these two points here which isn't much okay and again, that would <clears throat> definitely make more sense once we start to apply um, um, elevation, I guess, in our height view. But um, what I'm considering is at this point is just taking this F sec this X section and just carrying it all the way through, and just bring it back out, just much like we have been. That that to me, I think, actually does make more sense. And if we find that we we don't need to have those in there, we can always take them out. So I think for the the purpose of doing this build I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in there just to follow through because primarily and this goes with what I said before you want to keep um, your X sections closed in and by closed in you want it to be a complete loop around your circuit you know as far as the direction of your track you don't necessarily want to stop it so that doesn't take away I guess as far as my explanation as far as if you do stop it what's what would happen if you were to do that that still would hold true it's just uh, for the the purposes of this build to me it just makes more sense to just continue this all the way through because uh, the fact that there is such things like um, curbing and such uh, through this uh, infield area um, these x sections 
will, will probably become become useful to to some, to some degree. So, uh, also the fact that you know you have the ability uh, by putting these X sections in here, you can apply uh, more natural bump maps, if you will. And by that I mean, if you wanted to put a subtle bump, I guess in that area which there is some elevation in that sense through this area and we'll see that in the LIDAR um, I think, you know, again I feel that these exceptions will become pretty useful to us in here, so and like I said, if it, <coughs> if it comes comes to be that you know, as we do this, that the X sections become uh, non-functional, then yeah, we can be chunked out. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just apply them. This would be the natural way of things as far as, even if you were to uh, apply all of your X sections, W sections, what have you, as you append and prepend, this would be the same same process only and you're only you're adding them at this point and not all at once so yeah let's just go ahead so <clears throat> as I can as I do this what I consider like I said this is your outermost X section so these two by themselves there could be adjusted to create curbing so I could put elevation in here for example to include even from here to here so there could be an incline here and then a flat in between this one and this one. So you, you know, it, it does so, somewhat serve a purpose. It's not entirely useless. Alright. Okay, so just continuing on with that. Just going to leave a little bit of room. Let's go all the way around. just as we've been doing and it does become very tedious but the fact that this is going rather quickly I'm kind of pleased by it um, I don't want to forget uh, like I s had mentioned uh, earlier I want to go over a little bit um, as far as the different uh, procedures you can go through as far as applying uh, you know how to use your LiDAR information uh, as opposed to being able to use it directly in the sandbox, you know, chunking out um, enough information, I guess, to get it to load in the sandbox, because you know it is it does it is you will find it become difficult um, as you get uh, uh, the more difficult, the more detailed and uh, dense. That's probably the word I was looking for. The more dense scans of tracks in the form of LiDAR, so I want to show that, I guess, a little bit. I don't really have um, uh, any demonstration, I guess, to show. It's just what I will probably use as an example is just the, the Charlotte LiDAR to show you different ways that you can, um, yeah, how you can use the LiDAR as opposed to the way I've used it directly in the fashion that I have here or um, by creating your own low poly model based on the uh, the LiDAR information that's basically I want to show that just a little bit at least anyway so I don't want to forget to do that still making pretty good time here you know but uh, even with that being said you know it kind of gives you an idea of how long it takes, I guess, to put, you know, tracks like this together. You know, it's not something that you're going to get done in a couple hours or in a day. Um, this becomes a process, you know, to do it correctly, at least, anyway. You know, <clears throat> I guess any track can be built rather quickly, but, uh, again, it comes down to the quality of it and the accuracy of it, to be honest. And <clears throat> what I'm trying to convey 
you know, between, I think I speak for, uh, James as well, I think it, it's, I would much rather see more accurate and quality builds than just, you know, like some hacked up noise. That's just my own personal opinion, and that's kind of why I figured to feel it more appropriate, I guess, to, to do these types of streams to, to show, you know, better uh, track building pr procedures. And so, <coughs> the only hope is that these can, yeah, that's, that's the fact, that's how these will work. Do you find these useful so to the point that, yeah, you want to be a more accurate and quality track builder? You know, but the the fact that I have, you know, at certain points, I think I've come to that conclusion that uh, I may have tried to bite off more than I can chew on uh, trying to tackle a track of this nature. But um, if anything, this kind of bodes, you know, if anybody knows me as far as my, you know, lack of infatuation uh, to build a road course at all. I've never had any any ambition, I guess, to be able to, you know, to uh, take it to fruition as far as completing a road course. And the fact that this one has kind of a little bit of both, it's like knowing everything I do know as far as, you know, in the form of an oval, you know, how do you marry those two? So... It is very much, it has been very much a challenge so far, because um, I don't take away from that at all. This is no cakewalk, but um, it is a tall order, I guess, to try and get that type of thing to work, and the fact that I'm doing it in the fashion that I am, and not trying to take something that's already in existence... You know, and try to make that work. That, to me, is just... Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the background image back on. Let's see what I got going on here. Okay, so remember that's the opening as far as coming back out there. So, yeah, I can continue on that same trajectory for now. Yeah, at least for now. Keeping those all at mode absolute. Um, now, the fact, like I was saying, I wanted to keep this as close to the wall as possible. Yeah. I, I can already sense if I was to do it this way, this is going to become, in this area, a very, a very unnatural banking. Because I'm going to need to get the banking, I guess, as, as it would normally, normally naturally occur here, but it's going to carry over into this direction, so the flow of it's going to be this way, so as far as it's going to be banking going from side to side here. So that's going to be kind of unnatural, and I'm trying to alleviate that somehow. Um, I may have to put um, additional crutch type of... Um, Feathering X sections, I guess, to get that somewhat close to where it should be, um, as far as the banking that exists between here and here, so that it's going to be as you come off this turn, it's going to have banking, you know, going across the green, if you will, as far as the way it should would go naturally. So that's going to be a challenge for sure. All right, so I'm just going to keep going with that. I'm just, you know. Kind of thinking of these things as I go. I'm not going to try and do anything with it right now. Okay. Just trying to show the uh, what you would necessarily want to do with your X sections is make it a complete closed circuit loop around your circuit. To include all through the uh, the road course uh, infield and all that. So there is still some 
of the same aspects you want to apply to this so far as you would a, a regular oval. Okay. So we'll get into some bigger sections here, which will kind of speed this process up here a little bit. Make sure that's connected. There we go. Uh, yep, sometimes that'll happen. You'll be like, why isn't it giving me options? Maybe my hand's getting a little bit tired. Not gonna lie there. That's it's very hard on the hands, and the fact that I've got a much more ergonomic um, mouse that I had than what I had. It goes to show you just how straining it can be on these types of things. Yeah, I wish there was a way uh, to be able to copy, you know, almost the same you can with textures uh, onto the different X, you know, the W sections and F sections. Uh, and I have a process, I guess, in Sandbox here to do that for applying what I'm doing here. That would be glorious but the fact that this is such a primitive uh, piece of software putting that term loosely in comparison to what's available I guess for um, newer types of simulations yeah it's kind of crazy all right so yeah now we're coming down to the back stretch coming to the home stretch all right Yeah, we're really closing it in now. Oh, why is it swirling? What the heck was that? That scared me. She was swirling on me. I didn't like that. Okay. I definitely want to make sure I save this. Let me get this closed in. It didn't crash, but I'm hoping it doesn't. We'll see what happens, I guess, once we get this closed in. Hoping it don't crash, that's for sure. I'm going to cross the fingers. This is where that uh, new emote comes into play. Alright, so here we go. we got one more section here. Just about ready to save it. Alright, I said to put that a little bit closer there, that's fine. Alright, so we can kind of move this closer there. Cool. Alright, so now I'm going to do them and save it again. Let that all closed in. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this back on and save it. And we're on LiDAR D, so there we go. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I actually, I want to make sure it's saved. Let's make sure it's saved. I'm going to verify that it's saved. Uh, D. Yep, so we're good to go there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close that. And this is something <coughs> I've preached uh, before as well, as far as to close it completely out every once in a while, just to refresh it and open it back up. Yep, just to kind of freshen it up. And if anything, what that'll do is it'll kind of free up, I guess, any uh, memory as far as RAM. Uh, give that a second to load. No, that doesn't necessarily show up on the stream, but. Uh, does on my end, so I just have to give it a, just a couple more seconds or so. So there we go. So now I can reopen up that lighter D. And there it is. Cool. So we got uh, one more set of X sections that we need to put in, and that's going to define our apron. Okay. Um, when I say that, that's primarily, I guess, the. Uh, uh, 
the apron of the uh, uh, main oval, I should say. So, let's go ahead and turn this off. And you know, keep in mind when you do that, anything uh, in the form of 3DOs as well as track textures, it'll it turns that off. So, yeah, all you're left is just with the uh, the track spline itself. But we're getting a lot of red lines, you know, and they're so close together as far as primarily through this area. So, but yeah, what we'll need to do now is define. <clears throat> the region for the apron so coming off of where this wall would be to the apron that transition okay so that'll be our next set of X sections and more than likely what will have to happen after that is another X section you know now that I've had time to actually <clears throat> look at our progress here we'll have to put that one as well as one in between that one and this one to flatten it back out here before it gets to this. Now we could, in theory, just leave it from here and have it go all the way to that. And just leave that the same level from the apron all the way to this. Could necessarily do that. But the fact that there is some elevation change in certain areas between the apron and, say, this grass line. So we'll probably end up having to put another set of X sections to deal with that. But for now, like I said, I need to put that in there to define uh, between where the wall is and the apron, that transition. So that's going to be the next set of X sections for this, this stage. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let me see here. Oh, yeah, because I closed it out, I have to unlock all the geometry. You're going to close it out and came back in. I have to re-unlock all the geometry so that you can apply X section. Okay, so <clears throat> I can use this apron line here, I guess as a guide. Okay, so that's what I'll do. Alright, so we'll just move this along and insert another one. And just as the same as we've been doing. So let's zoom in a little bit more so that and actually let's go ahead and set this background image to none and just go that way. Alright, now the fact that <coughs> you have that option, I guess, to go back and forth between that. I do want to have that on so I have somewhat of an idea. I mean I can kind of guesstimate at this point. Because I know <clears throat> the walls here, and I can kind of just loosely put that in there. I could do that. But the fact that you have the option to go um, and turn this on and off, you know, I can see I would be way off if I was to continue on that same. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on. And if I need to turn it off again, I'll go ahead and do that. But I do want to have it somewhat m more in into place at this stage you know as far as doing these so uh, I got a little bit of an arc here I don't think that'll be too much of an issue yeah that should probably be fine so between here and that, that would probably bode well again as far as like I was saying earlier as far as to put another X section in here just to define this more clearly and especially beyond that all the way into the infield so that's probably what I'll do after I lay this this set of X sections down. Alright, so we'll just keep going with this for now. And I'm continuing to keep it at mode absolute for that interpolation. So, majority of this stream, what I necessarily did want to go over, as you can probably tell, um, is just moving forward, I guess, with uh, your track spline. Um, now that we have a usable, usable information, I guess, as far as the, the ladder information, you know, we have that. 
to you know we can we can go on that now even without having the lidar information uh, to move forward with it you could still do this step uh, it's just that the fact that I've uh, taken the liberty I guess of spending a little bit more time on lidar to kind of explain how that would be used uh, in apply you know uh, applying the informations to the X sections you know as far as the elevations so could still do this step even without the lidar okay Oh, see, and I got some broke up. This isn't attached here, so I'll get that. Take care of that. Alright, so insert X section. Yeah, so this is going to go beyond, I guess, our painted line, which is fine. Not the problem. Yeah, so we just got kind of get an imaginary line here. I'm going to go all the way to this. Now we'll be able to squeak one in. In between here, uh, this F section here is broke up. Yep, that should work out just fine. Go ahead and put this one in. More absolute. Yep, we should be able to squeak this one in between. This here. All right, so we'll just keep going. Now, uh, make sure I get to... <clears throat> now, it's probably fair to mention I don't want to follow this here. Uh, more than likely, this is going to end up being uh, in the form of a 3DO, or probably either that or a TSD in the grass here. <clears throat> I'm not applying any geometry to this to get this all laid out. So... Yeah, more or less what I'm going to end up doing is just following the uh, original contour of the oval, the outside oval as far as be it through this trioval here. So, okay. Yeah. Just kind of trying to stay in tune, I guess, with what's what we got going on with it so that, you know, as far as moving ahead. We know how to adjust it, if necessary. Yeah, at least, that's what I think of. Alright. I'm glad these. <laughs> this is the only area I got the small sections, as far as for the openings in the pit wall. Because that would be murder if I had so many of those. Now, <clears throat> keeping in, in mind eventually uh, what will end up happening with a lot of these, uh, with this X section here, is they'll probably get snapped um, into uh, like this F section here eventually. But we're keeping, you know, a decent amount of uh, cushion or padding, I guess, into that for now until we're 100% satisfied with how the track feels. You know, once we get to test it in the game, because that'll affect how the textures will actually show um, proper transitions of, I guess, of the grass and so on. If this was left hanging out there, and you'd you'd be able to see that for sure if you tested it in game, that it's very noticeable. Getting kind of curious in a, in a way, I guess, as far as to actually get this thing in the game and actually test out what we have for initial banking and elevation for the different areas. Try not to get too ahead of myself, though, as far as to get... We can tend to get a little giddy sometimes as far as to be like, oh, I want to try it so bad. But uh, even in, in testing mode, you want to make sure a majority of your uh, eyes are crossed and 
Yeah, your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed, yeah. Because you can run into some problems and you're going to be like, and get, get back into that impatient and frustrated mode. Which you want to stay away from. I want to maintain as much patience as possible. You know, so, even with as far as we've gone here, we have yet to even attempt to try it in the simulation itself so far. And even as much as, as we could have, we could have so far. But, uh... I'm thinking if this goes as well as I hope it does, as far as this process here, uh, we should be that much closer to getting it into the sim and testing it out in that fashion, even with uh, minimal um, aspects to it, um, in testing mode at least, and uh, go into the process as far as how you know you set up your track I and I. You know, get your initial track folder set up, I guess, for in the game, if you will. Yeah, so that should be uh, what I should be able to go to, hopefully, uh, next week. As we move along, move along and move forward, I guess, with this uh, whole procedure as far as the track build, scratch, scratch track build. Alright, so coming up to that infield area. Very fast and furious. Okay, it's coming to the other end of the. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is something I was concerned about as well, as far as uh, these are considered uh, curve sections in here, and the fact that I don't have the ability to turn these Euclidean. So, yeah. I'm wondering how those were going to respond here. That's not too bad. That's that's tolerable. So far. Yep. And like I said, once that we get to the point of being able to snap that um, all the way, I guess, into that that F section, that's this is probably just fine. Seeing the fact that it'll turn that way, it'll let you know it's like, hey, you're going to cross this. Yeah. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that. It's just letting you know that it's, it, it won't, uh, won't let you do it. Okay. <coughs> or if you do, then you would have to mark that as uh, non-Euclidean. Which is what we don't want to do. With that. Okay. So yeah, we try to follow this F section as much as possible. And the fact that I do have, you know, this morning we decided, I guess, to go and split that, you know, so we could define this a little bit more uh, precisely. So the fact that we'll have this little sliver in here still to find its grass, even though it should be asphalt. The majority of this region will still be asphalt. So. Maybe a little bit of a compromise, but I think it's a, a reasonable compromise. Oh, that is not letting me put an X section there. What's up with that? And that's probably because, when I look at it, I've got this F section here. So <clears throat> that's probably fair to mention. So when you have this type of scenario, if the yeah, if you were to try to put an X section into here, it's not going to happen, so... Uh, excuse me one moment, folks. I'll be right back.
All right, we're back, folks. I apologize for that little bit of a delay. Um, so, yeah, where I was explaining, um, as far as the fact that we've got this F section going across the way this segment is going, it's not going to allow me to put um, an X section here because it's it's already closed. So probably. What I might have to do is against my better judgment, I'm going to have to leave this float. I don't really want to do that, but um, the fact that in order to get this to find the way we need it uh, to be, that's what's got to happen here. So um, let me go back into bringing uh, this up here, and I got the LiDAR still in there. Uh, here, let me do this. Let me go into object view. Yeah, let me go into this really quick. And I should only have the LiDAR. Let me move that down. And let's see. Why did that not move down? Let's suck here. Okay. All right, so maybe I guess it come down a little bit more than I thought. I'm just trying to get this down enough to where it's out of the way. Uh, all right, let's do. Oh, smooth. Sorry. All right, that'll work. Just to get it out of the way. Uh, as far as out of view there. So now, go back into geometry view. If you recall how we had this defined, so if we go into this, this is our pit road. So if I take that out, it kind of takes away as far as that being uh, assigned as pit road. So I don't want to lose that. And the fact that I've got these sections here to define that, that's it kind of carries over into this area, which we definitely needed as a pit road. Uh, so without splitting it up again and you know trying to divvy that down, then we need to have it this way. So uh, what it's going to force me to have to do uh, for applying this X section through here is is to leave that kind of floating here, unfortunately. But I can still. Um, See how this is here. So that ends here. Okay. Just trying to see where that ends there. I can continue on the other side of this here. So on this side of it here, I should be able to put one here. I think. Let me see. Actually, probably not here either because it's got this F section going here. And I can confirm that just by that. So. I'm going to have to continue on this side. Yep, so I can continue there. So, yeah, that kind of proves, you know, that's what I was trying to show as far as the fact that I've got this closed off here in this X section, you know, this way. I cannot put an X section in here because that's to get, for that X section to get to the other side of that segment, it would have to cross this F section and won't allow that. So, that's just something that. Uh, that nature of the beast as far as uh, designing tracks, so that's something that could take and cigarette. Right now, will that necessarily pose a problem um, moving forward with this? Possibly. Uh, we'll have to do some testing to see um, if I can get away with just leaving this float and then have it carry over back over into here. It might create a huge hump here or a depression. Um, We'll have to see. We will definitely have to see. So for now, I'm just going to continue in this uh, direction here. You put it back on textures like this. And I'll just continue it this way. So it still doesn't go against, uh, you know, trying to keep your X section going. Uh, 
know, keep it as much of a closed loop as possible all the way around your circuit. Like I said, as much as possible. When you run into situations like that, that's obviously not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, it's going to take some testing to see if that's going to need to be corrected. Um, in theory there, I'm thinking it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I think we should be able to uh, work around that. But, uh, yeah, that will require some testing for sure. Uh, so this one, this X section here was defining our apron uh, for the most part. So the fact that I'm putting it in this region that I am here uh, may or may not become useful. We'll have to see how that works. I might just, um, now that I think of it, I may not do it this way because I don't think I'm, I'll have any reason to have it uh, go through here. Right, let me turn off this because uh, this I think is just a painted no that is a wall okay yeah I don't think there's a lot of reason to have uh, an X section going through here uh, I guess what I think of I guess is doing this here you still keep in mind as far as if you were to con if I was to continue for example, I guess this trajectory, you know, as a continuous loop, you just kind of find yourself putting where that would necessarily land, as far as you were, if you were to continue that. So, I think what I'll do is I'll put the X section, I guess, at least up and through here, and I may or may not necessarily need it for anything. But uh, just to keep it on that trajectory. Yeah. And as I said earlier, it's like you, you, you might find yourself taking, uh, you know, chunking out X sections as you do this. And I want to leave some room here. Yep, just give it a little bit of padding there. So I might just stop it there for now. And there's work my way around here now keeping in mind that was considered our apron on our outer oval so I'm just at this point just trying to imagine you know, I can use the center line at this point I guess as a guide um, as to where that X section would be so I'll just follow this thing around like so yep so I'm just coming in around, I'm just following this through here. So where this would start back up, coming out, would have to be, yeah, so right about in here. We need that to start back up again because that's where the apron starts again. So it, definitely here, but the fact that there's going to be some here, and this is, as I've already mentioned, uh, this is going to pose possibly a bit of an issue as far as how this uh, all this elevation is going to apply here. We'll have to probably do a left-right type of situation here as opposed to an absolute or front-back. Uh, again, that would require some testing. So um, For now, what I'm going to do is just at least put the next section here. And... I'm going to kind of go on this opposite side of the center line, like so. And it might work better for me to put it on this side now that I think of it, because I need to, it to line up, I guess, with the apron here. So I'm kind of working backwards. So let's insert next section here. Okay, you can get the idea this is where the apron's at here on this line. Okay, so I'm just going to work backwards from that and get this to line up as close as possible to where that would be. So yeah, I'm going to have to be on this side of the center line. And like I said, it's probably going to it's probably going to create 
uh, somewhat unnatural uh, type of banking elevation change I guess in this area so we'll have to work that in as best as we can okay but what I'm going to use as a guide is kind of just line this up with this is this is where our apron is right here and kind of line it right up with that that's what I'm using as my guide okay so at least we'll have a flow coming off of there and have some bit of a transition at least at this point not so much here as, we, as much as we will here and when I say transition as far as you'll be able to see more of a change here than you would here this is still relatively flat in this one okay and I can already kind of kind of get the idea as far as um, the difference between using a uh, now that I think of this here I'm gonna have to add at least one more to feather this like I said, a lot of this will make more sense once uh, we actually start applying these types of things in the height view. As far as how. Okay, so we do that. And then now we can continue out here. This, this obviously makes more sense out here. So we'll continue with this. That region back there or whatever is going to obviously require lots, uh, quite a bit of testing to see what's going to work the best to get the appropriate amount of uh, banking and elevation change there. Okay. So now we can continue on with this. You know, this, this for sure or whatever is pretty straightforward as far as what needs to happen here. So we'll just go with that. Go with what we know. Alright. Yeah, and the fact that I'm using that uh, painted line there to uh, show me the way, I guess, as far as that uh, where that apron is. section so yeah we get into some bigger sections here and that's what I like about <coughs> having a build like this the way it is where we don't have a lot of chopped up segments makes doing these types of processes a little bit quicker and you can now here's something to mention too we haven't seen this as of yet um, that I can recall but when you zoom in and this is you see how uh, sandbox and this translates also in the uh, in the simulation itself as far as how the it tends to breathe see how that flexes like that and depending on if you're zoomed in really close or far out it, that does necessarily happen, maybe not to this extreme as it does in Sandbox, but it does happen in the game itself as far as how <coughs> the tracks are rendered, you know, based on the, um, the graphics render engine, you know, for the sim. Uh, you will have to deal with that type of thing. So, and like I said, it's not necessarily to the same degree, I guess, as it appears in here in sandbox but it does happen so ah, dang it <laughs> I got ahead of myself there so just trying to get the change of the interpolation on that there we go Let's see I think I got this one yeah so yeah you can see how fluid this line tends to remain even with having that that size of a segment Still pretty decent. You get a little bit of arcness, arcness here, I guess, but that's that's actually a pretty good line there. To be perfectly honest. There's no need to necessarily chop this up again uh, to try and correct that. 
I mean, you could if you wanted to. And this is, again, this is still a um, good stage of the game, I guess, to be able to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know, the fact that I didn't put this opening, I guess, in here, I could necessarily split that to get that in there if I wanted to. But uh, for these purposes, I don't think I'm going to. Um, but yeah, that was, this would definitely be the stage to which you'd want to do that. As opposed to later. Alright. So we got this long section here. Alright. Okay, did I get this one? Yeah. Just making sure. So yeah, we got that one big piece there for that segment. Okay. You'll hardly ever get these, you know, like when you uh, try to right-click on it, that they'll be automatically attached. You almost usually, almost always have to uh, to move it even slightly to get it to snap. Okay. Um. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I'm trying not to use up too much time, I guess, as far as I want to show um, a little bit. Um, and Max, as far as uh, what other types of methods you can use as far as uh, with your LiDAR information. But uh, I want to at least get this to the point where, uh, and this should be a pretty good um stage, you know, as far as once I get this done. I, w I do want to get at least one more set of X sections in uh, to de define beyond the apron. Yeah, so here we are. Close that up. Yeah, so I want to put at least one more um, closer to the infield here to define between those two points so I already got this defined very well that's our racing surface in between these two points this would be the back side of the wall from here so that much is all good so we got that all closed in uh, with exception I guess of those areas I guess in the, in the infield coming into the the pit exit so we're gonna call that good and I'm gonna bring back in my um, like this and I'm gonna save it again and this is gonna be LiDAR E and keeping in mind I've got the LiDAR still well below it's still in there it's just it's not uh, all right now I want to confirm that that is created so LiDAR E which is right there good to go okay I'm not gonna close it at this point um, you could if you if you necessarily wanted to. It's not a bad habit uh, to get into your close it out, open it back up. But um, I haven't been in it too long, I guess, in this session. You know, since I've reopened it, so uh, should be okay. So now what I want to do is I want to turn off the world again, and I want to create one last set, at least one last set of X sections to define uh, beyond the apron close to the infield so it'll be between uh, the apron and this and then we'll go from here to there which is our innermost X section so we'll have those we'll be able to find this region on the apron of the outer oval the main oval uh, more precisely keeping in mind that <clears throat> a majority of the racing is pretty much on the the original oval so all right. There's probably going to be much more attention needed, I guess, as far as those areas that go uh, into the infield for sure, as we've already <coughs> kind of come to witness. Okay, so yep, that's going to kind of 
follow roughly, you know, stay ahead of this wall and just kind of follow, you know, like this grass line, for example. Yeah. So we'll, this will be our the last set of X sections that I'll put in uh, before we can necessarily start applying some elevation data uh, by way of the height view. Alright, come on, snap in there. Okay, so... There we go. It's gonna be a little tedious now. Much more tedious than it has been. Alright, so... Exception. Yeah, we'll definitely get a little bit this much closer to uh, being able to to apply, um, you know, get it into the sim itself and actually test it. But I won't necessarily do that until we get some elevation data in there. And that kind of info, that kind of, you know, that step, I'll necessarily save that for next week probably. As we're fastly approaching on, I guess, that uh, three hour mark, I try to keep these relatively within the three hour time span just to keep them uh, somewhat condensed and you know, optimized I guess in that fashion too I could probably keep going on and on I guess with this it's always been a good idea to me I guess to uh, find a good place to stop it and to say that's enough's enough for now and that's something that you have to discipline yourself into as well as far as uh, part of that patient's uh, application, you know. Uh, you have to say, you have to be able to discipline yourself to say enough's enough for now. Because you can drive yourself nuts as far as working on any one particular track for too long. And you just be like, yeah, you, you, you tend to wander back into that uh, frustration mode and losing your patience and you don't want to do that you want to avoid that as much as possible All right. okay so now we're coming into the entrance of pit road uh, to which we don't really need a whole lot going on here as far as um, uh, elevation there so what I could potentially do is just stop that at this opening that should probably be good I mean I don't want to take away from the fact that you should never ever leave um, X sections floating just the fact that you want to keep those to a minimum and just understand how X sections do when you leave uh, X sections floating how that affects um, higher elevation changes apply to the actual track spline geometry. Yeah, I don't I don't never want to convey the fact that you never want to do that. It's just where you do it I guess is important. So the fact that I could probably get away with that um, right here pretty easily without it affecting too much. And again that'll you know once we started applying uh, the actual Elevation data, I guess, in the height view, we'll know that for sure. But uh, just at this point, just going by memory and by experience, um, it tells me this shouldn't be a problem as far as initially there. And I could probably, yeah, do the same thing like I did uh, with the other X section in this region. I should be able to just continue. Yeah, so for that one I did it over here. So that one I can just at least put one uh, going along where there would potentially be a wall or some type of thing along this way. Yeah. I might just leave that empty for now, but with the fact that I've got this one here, I'll probably at least go that far. 
with it and take this out, at least to where this is. At least. Just to kind of keep that somewhat consistent. So, let's uh, go ahead and do that. Let's do that. So, yeah, I'm going to insert one here. And again, I still want to keep in mind as far as by putting it this way, how that's going to affect any potential um, elevation that I would put on this. You know, that abrupt stop, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply these for now. I may not even need them. May not even need them to be here, but I'm going to go ahead and do this anyway. And just kind of follow... At least give me a guide as to where these would potentially be if I was to continue. All right, where I started and trying to keep it as much of a uh, closed-in loop as possible. So I'm just keeping it off that F section, and I'm going to stop this one right across from where. I stopped this one over here. Okay. Because what I do know is there's some <coughs> elevation change. Yeah, so that's probably about the same spot. So right about there would be fine. Now, if I was to follow this all the way through, as far as where I come back out, just like we did before that line would be against this this F section here so I'm just kind of following this around that uh, whoops I'm not too far okay so that would be here yeah so I'd be following this line this F section right here so as we come out here, where that X section would be, would be right in this area. Okay. Well, and the fact that we're having to deal with this type of build the way we are, so we're going to have to uh, keep it across from this one here. So I'm going to put one here. So that's across from this, this one here. And again, that's all that feathering potentially keeping that uh, elevation change uh, feathered so it's not an abrupt abrupt change definitely don't want that okay and again a lot of this will all make sense once we start applying um, the actual elevation data to that but we want to keep this one here Alright, so we're going to follow this line. I'm going to go back, work backwards, I guess, a little bit again. So I'll go to this segment, add this X section, and we're going to follow, follow this line, like so. Just like that. Alright, I'm going to change that to mode absolute. And just fill that in here. So that's so you get the idea as far as <coughs> where you want, even though you're not able to necessarily or don't need it to put them um, all the way through and make it a closed circuit. You kind of follow the same idea of if it was an entirely closed circuit, uh, and the fact that you'll run into areas like I just did here on the on the pit exit. Where you can't put any X sections because of um, how your F sections are defined and so on, um, you still want to follow that same idea as okay. If I was to put it there, where would where would I be? And just follow that all the way through. And especially with the way this track flows, we need to know where that's going to be. And I could necessarily just work backwards uh, for sure. You know, just work backwards as far as where that would land here. But just to get an idea of the flow of the track is you know like we've gone through and that's more 
you know, just to get a better understanding of how your track is actually going to flow, how it, you know, the direction of it, and so on. It doesn't hurt, whatever, to work backwards. You know, I could have done that too, as far as where it comes out and all that would have been. But to come to this conclusion that it shouldn't be a problem to uh, just be able to feather this X section here and, instead of running it all the way through the infield. That's how you can come to that conclusion. So, we're going to continue, I guess, with putting this last set of segments in here. Don't want to waste too much time, but you can see how long it's taken so far. And I've tried not to waste too much time. I know I did uh, have a bit of a spiel at the start of this stream there, but I felt it was uh, important information, I guess, to put out there as far as. And, uh, yeah, just to kind of, you know, I've done quite a bit of work, I guess, uh, off stream, uh, to work with, you know, to come to that conclusion that you may run into the issue of, uh, with the LiDAR data anyway, as far as to, uh, use a different approach. And I'm going to get into that as soon as I get this, uh, last set of X sections in here. So I can get this set up for next week and start applying some data to it. I want to be sure to put my LiDAR data, I guess, um, in a more usable position. And going into next week. Okay. Alright. Yeah, this is back at a pretty good trajectory so far. I'm satisfied with it. To be perfectly honest. Okay, so we go. That. No. I was going to say, I thought that snapped. Not quite. There we go. Okay, so just continuing on. So again, you got that <coughs> visible amount of flexing and that breathing that the track does as far as being zoomed in real far. So I want to zoom out a little bit. Don't want to freak out about it, that's for sure. That's normal occurrence, I guess, for that uh, spline geometry to do that, especially in sandbox. Alright. Pretty good trajectory here. Okay. See, it looks like I come very close with the fact that you do always find it necessary to have to <coughs> move that just a tad. You hardly will ever get um, the X section to snap automatically when you right click. It might look like it is, but chances are it probably isn't, so you always just have to. Kind of move it around to make sure that it is snapped. Okay. Yep, getting down to nitty gritty here. So this is the tunnel. On the back stretch. Yeah, see, as I mentioned there, you can kind of uh, see the uh, arrow turn into like a rag doll. That's how you can kind of tell that you're, you're snapped to it. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I zoom in here. You can kind of see how this... Oh, that one's already snapped. Okay. Let me move to the next one. Yeah. So as you get this closer to the next section here, you can kind of see that arrow kind of turns into a rag doll. It kind of folds in on itself. That's how you can kind of tell that you're snapped. I don't know if that's kind of hard to see there. I'm being pointed on it, but you can see it kind of turned into a rag doll. It folds in on itself. That's how you can kind of tell that it's snapped. Okay. So, now that we got that, I'm going to save it again. 
So now we got all that done. So we should have all of our initial X sections applied so we can do, uh, so we can put, uh, use our light editor for uh, uh, elevation data. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, but I'm going to bring back at this point, at least anyway, I'm going to go, nope, that's not what I wanted. See, and that's another way you guys can turn the background image off as well. Either there or up on this point. You can just set it to none. So you have both both ways you can turn that off. I, if I failed to mention that, my apologies. But the fact that you can turn it off either there or right in your view. You can just toggle it off. Either way. So you have the two options for that. And in fact, that's probably a good point there. I'm going to go ahead and clip that. That's a good point. Yeah, so I'm going to mention that as far as... Kindred coming in with the party four. Welcome everybody coming over from Hindered Stream. <laughs> As my alert slowly fades away. <laughs> Might have to turn that one down a little bit. How we doing there, uh, Cortana? Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Everybody else coming over from Hindered Stream, welcome. Glad to have you. <laughs> I was just starting to, uh, uh, starting to close up, I guess, on, uh, uh, finishing up what I was doing here, but uh, uh, I got a little bit more time, so I'm hoping uh, y'all enjoy, I guess, what I got going on here. If you have any questions, feel free, I guess, to, to ask. I'll be more than glad to try and explain it, but uh, continuing some work anyway, you know, just to put it briefly, uh, some work on a track spline, some track spline geometry, I guess, for a um, racetrack build, I guess, for racing simulation. That happens to be uh, in excess of 15 years old, but the fact that uh, there's such a huge uh, demand, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, for new content for the simulation. So, um, yeah, the fact that this same type of process actually um, can be applied even to modern racing simulations as well um, in this form of spline uh, construction. So. Um, it's all good. Just rate someone health. Have a good stream. I'm off. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate you coming by there. What are you guys doing uh, this evening anyway? I didn't get a chance to. Uh, I got started, you know, rather abruptly, I guess, on my end here. So uh, I give a shout out to. I give a shout out to Hindred. Let's see if I can do this right again. Um. If you haven't checked out Hinder Strain, you should. Um, he usually has some pretty interesting stuff going on. He's been uh, uh, doing some uh, modeling, some actual like uh, plastic models mostly. You know, as far as like, and he paints them up, such like that. Uh, I want to make sure I get this in here right. Yes, that should be correct. Let's see if I if I can get this right. Oh, he was playing actually some Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. How is that going anyway? I know he said he was off, but uh, anybody over in uh, from Hindred Stream there, you can <laughs> kind of fill me in. I guess I'm in that. I've heard of that game, but I haven't necessarily haven't necessarily played it. So I'd be curious to know. I guess as far as how that went, I'll have to check the VOD out. I guess uh, later on too. Um. Okay. So yeah, if anybody um, in my stream uh, that hasn't come over from Hinder Stream, if you haven't checked him out, be sure to go uh, check him out and give him a follow. He's a really cool dude. He's got, he does some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I know he was obviously playing some some games, I guess, this evening, but uh, there's uh, plenty of times that he uh, dabbles in some creativeness and some uh, modeling. So uh, he's got some pretty cool stuff there. Go and check him out. Uh, so anyway, I was just saying, you know, as far as spline design, and hence uh, 
why uh, it kind of it's kind of a play on words, I guess, for the streams ahead to here on Saturdays, be it Spline Design Studio Saturday. Uh, this same type of process can necessarily be applied in much the same fashion as um, modern day uh, game builds, be it uh, racing simulations or what have you. Um, one of the things that I had briefly shown at the start of the stream, for example, uh, and this is my 3D Max um, application with some LiDAR data in there, and we have, I've taken the liberty in this uh, this part, I guess, to chunk out which data we don't need, um, I guess, out of the latter data, be it the fact that it's quite a bit of information as far as it being from a cloud point. Uh, LiDAR, you know, as far as information it had next to 3 million points or just over 2 million points or something of that nature. A lot of points. Like I said, a lot of information. Not quite as dense as some of the information that's available for other uh, things of this nature, but. Um, the fact that we d did find it necessary to have to chunk out the information that we didn't need so that we could get a, a usable model into our sandbox utility uh, <clears throat> to get it in some type of usable format like I said as far as uh, let me bring back this here and this kind of gives you somewhat of an idea if I come back into the camera view you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here as far as our splines, we've got some um, place setters, I guess you could say, got four textures like on our wall and our uh, surface, you know, as far as what's actually going to be erasable. Uh, and we've already gone over, and we'll eventually have to deal with this as far as filling in the voids that exist here for the, the way this, tr this particular track is designed. Uh, we'll need, this will need to be filled in. Uh, more than likely with uh, some type of 3D model application uh, to kind of hide this uh, to show I guess the flow uh, it goes through this direction into the infield and so on and the fact that I had just below the surface here I've put that well enough below so it was out of our out of range there I guess somewhat is the LiDAR data which is the checkered pattern and I can kind of bring that back up here really quick here just to kind of show What's going on here if I go back into my object placement view? I'm just going to bring that back up a little bit. Back to zero. And this will show you kind of more what we got going on here. So if I bring that back here, you can see all the checker pattern is the LiDAR data, which is basically um, the same as the 3D model that we have in our 3D Max. We've created a model. Uh, from 3D Max and was able to put that into our sandbox utility to create our track spline. This is the utility that's used to create um, track splines, I guess, for uh, the simulation that we're building this for. So the fact that we have it, uh, there's certain criteria that need to be met. Um, you can't go over a certain number of polys and a certain number of verts and so on I guess to get a model to actually show in the sandbox utility say for example uh, so there's a little bit more limitation um, as to how do you get lighter information you know be it so dense as it is to you know get it in here so to, to make it usable so this is the and it's pretty rudimentary we're coming to find that this isn't the best approach I guess for doing this because as uh, we've done here as far as to cut uh, the particular areas out, you can kind of get an idea of how many polys. You can see all these uh, jagged edges here as far as how we try to clean this up as much as possible in the 3D model in our 3D Max program. <clears throat> we did the best we could to get to cut out the areas and satisfy, I guess, um, how many polys we could have in a model as far as to bring it into uh, a 3D model, a 3DO model in the sandbox, as they call it. So, yeah, we're finding that this process, although it may work for this particular track build, it may not be um, very suitable, I guess, for uh, LiDAR information or cloud point data that's much more dense. Um, like I said, this this information for this build, at least anyway, as far as the what we were able to acquire 
only ended up being uh, just over 2 million points or uh, just shy of 3 million points but the fact that there there is um, cloud point data for different types of track tracks like this that you can get from the USGS site website as a product that are like you know 10 times as dense as this so the fact that um, being able to, to chunk out enough inf uh, information out of it to make it usable within um, what we're trying to build for here becomes a little bit more problem troublesome or problem problematic even so um, considering other methods uh, to create uh, within 3d max that is as far as uh, putting it into a format that's uh, usable you know to use this this lidar information into an application like that so uh, instead of using the lidar directly uh, to build a track in any uh, for any type of game or racing simulation you can create a lower poly um, version and we haven't done that as of yet this was some of the things that I kind of loosely gone over from the start of the stream but um, let me bring this back in here just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about um, I need to unhide oh this one's not the one I'm, my bad yeah this is not the one that I had where I can open that one up there really quick let me do that I'll go ahead and reset this and I'll open that one that we've that I've tried to do that right quick so let me navigate to got a lots of things going on uh, so yeah this one here gives it a more a better represent so what it basically did with this one and this is not by any means considered finalized as far as the process but it, just to give you an idea so this is the entire lighter information that we got without anything chunked out you can see a lot of the uh, the height data that exists in it uh, to include uh, spikes uh, for such things as the score the scoring pylon, the tunnel uh, depression that exists in the back stretch entrance of turn three uh, for this particular track. Uh, but this tan or beige color that you see here, that's uh, what we consider a uh, track spline. It's a makeshift, if you will. Uh, based on the LiDAR data, we can create a low, lower poly model that could potentially be uh, uh, translated out. That's not the word I want to use. Is that can be uh, to mimic, I guess, the LiDAR data to use it as a, a low poly version of the LiDAR data. Uh, be it the fact that for the most part, in most track builds, and it doesn't matter if it's a modern day. Uh, simulation or a modern game you're not going to be able to get this is like I said this is a very low density scan I guess as far as uh, cloud point data um, this one's pretty pretty small in, in density wise so the fact that when you get into more dense you know denser scans you're not going to be able to use all that information you know to directly put that into any type of game or recent simulation so what it becomes what, what it becomes a question of is how am I able to use the information in the lidar to my advantage to be able to create something that's not only the scale but it's accurately sized you know the proper height and what have you and just one of the many ways that you can do that in a program like 3d max is uh, through the use of splines so just for you know to get this to scale and this is all the scale based on a ground plane this is all based on um, information from Google Earth for example as far as to get our ground plane set to the proper size the di dimension of the of the track that we're trying to portray you know, trying to construct um, being able to overlay that the LiDAR data this in the same fashion as far as the uniform scale it to that ground plane which is flat and get that all lined up we've already gone through all this you know throughout the this has been a ongoing series as far as um, you know d uh, doing this process as far as using LiDAR data to create something out of nothing from uh, based on r real world information 
but <clears throat> like I said what has necessarily become problematic is being able to use that LiDAR data directly into creating something so again it becomes an issue of how can we still use that um, LiDAR the cloud point data to our advantage and one of the ways that we that we have um, figured how to do that is to create splines. So in this case, what I've done, like I said, with this beige area that's that exists in this scene, we've created a low poly version of the lidar, so it follows that same trajectory of the lidar data. And right now it's kind of in a rudimentary state. But if you look at this, if I move this up and down, you can kind of see how that marries, I guess, to the LiDAR data. There are some areas that are still need some honing. You know, it's the first to, to follow that trajectory of the LiDAR a little bit better. But you get an idea, and this is a much lower poly model that, so it's kind of like a jig or a mold of the LiDAR, if you will. And this is all based on spline, uh, spline construction, you know, be, be it... Um, um, can kind of show this a little bit as far as what we got going on here. It's it's basically starts off as a line, and then it gets expanded out into a shape, and it, it has a surface applied to it. And this can eventually, once it gets you know all honed out, to follow the contour of the lidar data more precisely into a sh you know uh, a one piece that you can convert into. Uh, you know, into any other any other game, be it uh, the one that we're trying to construct a track for, or even a modern one. Um, and like I said, this is still in a rudimentary state, um, as far as like because it doesn't line up, you know, exactly or perfectly as of yet. But you can kind of get the sense of where it is at this stage, as far as what needs to be adjusted, you know, up and down, I guess, to follow the contour of that lidar a little bit more precisely. And like I said, the the, fa uh, the fact that it'll be in a much lower um, polys, and to explain that a little bit more is it's not going to have so many polys. I, let's see if I can show this. You can kind of get a sense of how much, how many more polys are in this. All these little diamond-shaped deals in here that those are all polys. Okay, and that so that's a lot of information that's contained within this lidar data. That has been converted into an OBJ from um, LiDAR, you know, a, a LAS file, if you will, uh, from uh, the USGS um, website. And a lot of this information is freely available there. It doesn't cost a thing. Um, you know, to, to, to be able to convert that information into something that's lower poly that follows somewhat the contour, I guess, of that. And you're not going to get everything in there. You know, and I, like I said, you're already, someone already mentioned that. You are not going to get all this information that's in the LiDAR into this, but to get a majority of that, primarily, you know, the main elevation changes, you know, from one point to the next, um, that's r really about all you really need to have. But, you know, even to be able to use uh, some of the information as far as height data um, in the form of uh, these spikes that exist for, like, the score tower, that's all usable information as well. So, like, this height data that exists in the LiDAR for this, you can use that, you know, as far as to, uh, to highlight this vertex, for example, and find out where that exists and, exact, and get a, an exact measurement. For so, like, if I was to zoom in on this, let's see if I can get this to phone. cooperate for me. There we go. So, like, I'd zoom in on this. If I wanted to get the vertex of this point, and I think I'm going to have to go in here. I'm just going to go ahead and hold this for a second. Just so I can get this vert. So if I wanted to use this height data for this particular, for the score tower of this. Oops, I don't want that. Get out of that. Yeah, so I got that point highlighted. That's useful information because this information I can use that. And be it the fact that the units of scale that I have set up um, in the this 3D Max program right now is meters. So this Z value, if I was to translate this into 
from meters into feet that's usable information I can create a model or an object based on the height of that uh, to include you know even the base of it um, primarily what we're coming to find is the the way these spikes are designed it's not very useful um, to use all this data but the height is definitely usable as far as you know you can at least get a sense of how uh, tall something is uh, the information that you would use I guess to create um, you know the base of this for example you would just want to use the sat image which is underneath here so that's that's probably fair to mention but a lot of the height data definitely is very useful in the lidar and the fact that this lidar here has necessarily been you can see all the verts that exist in here it's just a lot of points in here and this is a very low dense scan in comparison to um, a lot of other scans that are available on the on the USG, uh, USGS uh, website so yeah so this is what uh, this is the point that we're at and uh, like I said as far as just fine-tuning the the way I guess to use the LiDAR data moving forward um, into whatever game that you're trying to create an object for um, this is this this is you know kind of where we're at as far as uh, and like I said this is still kind of rudimentary as far as the way this spline is designed but it gives you somewhat of an idea of getting the shape and the way this spline was initially created um, in fact let me go ahead and uh, let me just see if I can hide this yes I can hide this so if picture if you will how I've done this here if I bring this down to the ground plane you can kinda get a sense of how this this deal was designed it was basically a line that was drawn and let me put this on top down view that might work there so I'll get directly top down and this is this is how the initial spline was designed like I said kind of a plan words I guess for what we got going on here on this Saturday evening but um, you get the idea of how this was laid out here it was just an initial line to outline I guess on the, the sad image on the ground plane and applied particular modifiers to be able to um, apply it as a poly between that initial point and then also a surface so you can actually you know see that um, uh, so in a, in a sense the initial line and I can kind of demonstrate this I guess a little bit uh, if I go to I'll just create another another line and I can go into my nope gotta go into this here go to line so like how this would initially get done let me hide this one I'll just kind of do this really quickly and also rudimentary let me hide this one okay and I'll go into line this is how roughly how the same procedure so it's you kind of go around like so and you can put as many points as you'd like you try to keep it uh, as minimal as possible it's like you said you're trying to create a lower poly model but you put as many points as you uh, see necessary to create an initial spline you know and hence the uh, what we're doing here I guess is kind of a planned plan words for uh, what we've uh, called the streams here on Saturdays spline designs and it's gonna ask me to close it which I want to do that then from here you have this initial line um, I can go into here and as long as I keep that in there and don't don't flatten it or collapse it or anything like that I can apply a edit poly modifier to it and what that does that fills it in initially and I think I might have got a step ahead of myself uh, to be perfectly honest but see you get the idea as far as like now if I wanted to um, in fact I think that's is what it did no, I think there let me back this up a little bit so if I delete this modifier I'm gonna create another line 
I th think that should work now that I think of it. So now if I go like this, go to line. Yeah, I think I got a little bit ahead of myself, so I need to create another line. I could necessarily just clone the one that I have there. But just to kind of show you, and this is going to be very rudimentary. Keep in mind. Very rudimentary. I'm just going very quick just to kind of show the process here. And if this works like I, it should, I should be able to do... Uh, yeah, I should be able to do a poly modifier from here onto this. Let's reselect. Whoops. All right, I need to get out of line. Get out of that. All right, so I may have to do it this way. Uh, go to this line, like so, and then from here I can apply edit poly. I think it's going to fill it all the way in again now that I think of it. Yes, that's what I thought. So, um, okay. <laughs> now I kind of, uh, whoops, I didn't want to delete that. I just want to go back. Let me do a surface on it. I think that's what I want. I want a surface modifier. That's what I want. So do, uh, I just got to remember where that is. Just checking my modifier list. There's a lot of stuff in this modifier list that you can choose from, but um, yeah, there it is. So I had to find it there. So you can do a search on that too. But if I do a surface, uh, actually that didn't work either. What the heck? All right, maybe I'm just trying to do this too quickly. I'm trying to do it too quickly. Okay, let me delete that. Um, but anyway, you kind of get the idea of how this works here. I'm trying to th figure out what I... I have a brain fart right now. And that's not good. I don't like when that happens. So, like, I can do a... Um, I think what I necessarily have to do is I have to do... I have to connect those. That's what it is. That's the step I'm missing. So I can do a, uh, nope, that's already in the spline. Oh my goodness, brain fart. Yeah, so I'm missing this step right now, but you kind of get the idea. I don't want to kind of, I'm stepping all over myself right now. My, my brain is like overloaded, but um, you kind of get the idea um, as far as that. And then you would fill that in as a poly. And then just go from there. Um, as far as like <clears throat> applying different modifiers to it, as I've got in this one, uh, go ahead and unhide that one back out, like so. And let's hide these two that I created just for now. So hide those. So <clears throat> again, as you can see, kind of see um, this has two line modifiers, it's got a surface modifier and a poly modifier. Yeah, so I'm just trying to remember it. And you can go into each one of these. Yes, I want to hold that. You can go into each one of these and see the level of detail that exists in each one. So, like, if I go into the edit poly, I can see all the verts that exist there, as well as the polys that exist. I can select those indiv individually, whoops, as well as adjust them, <laughs> as I just did. But, yeah. And so this is how I would adjust... Uh, to this point, at least anyway, if I wanted to adjust the areas that aren't quite uh, massaged in, I guess, to the LiDAR data. I can bring that LiDAR data back here. Let me do that. Okay, so here's our LiDAR data. Uh, let me go back up into here. Bring this up. So now, the areas that need to be adjusted, for example, I can go into those areas independently and adjust them uh, to the LiDAR itself. So like, for example, I can just do this and see how it sinks into the LiDAR. I can adjust it accordingly. And if I need to apply additional verts, I can do that as well. 
Um, yeah, so if I need to go, uh, actually I'm in poly mode here, so if I go to vertex here, I can create a vert, say for example, just like that, I just right clicked on it, it gives me this little uh, precision deal here. I can create a vert pretty much anywhere I want. So if I want to put a vert here, vert there, and it's it behoove me, I guess, if I had to get snaps on, actually. And I'm getting, like I said, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, let me see. So many good tools in here. So, like, if I wanted to put, uh, let me actually move this uh, into a position that makes more sense. Okay. So if I do a vert or an edge snap, I'll put my edge snaps on, and I'm going to do a create vertex. And I got this little point. See now you can see this um, this little tool here, and it kind of turns. Yeah. So once I'm on the edge there, I can actually create a point on this, like so. I don't think that actually did it like I want there. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Uh, so if I do a point here, I can right click out of that. Now there should be a vertex right there. Let me turn the snaps off. See now there's a point here and I can adjust that. See and it's not, that's actually not, didn't snap to the edge. Show this a second here. See the, the one thing to probably keep in mind you know, that now that I show this, the one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this type of thing as far as snapping anything that's in the scene regardless if it's um, hidden or not it, that's what will that's what 3d max will essentially try to snap something like I just did there it'll try to do that it's like I showed it there so that, that's something to keep in mind but the vert is there it's just not exactly where I want it so that's not that's probably a poor way I guess they actually show as far as applying a vert uh, what would probably be more efficient like if I was to apply a cut or you know to cut into this um, this actual visual poly that I have here I can probably show that so if I was to um, Trying to think of what would be the best way to show that. So the, the initial way that I think of is just a cut. So the fact that I'm in an edit poly, I can do a cut just like this, and I can put my edge snaps on here, <clears throat> and just do a cut this way. Now I want to make sure that I'm on the piece that I want to cut. And just do it this way and I can right click out of that and that should have cut that so it doesn't look like it did okay so that should be on that edge there we go and then where's that okay so it's kind of below that so I need to go here snap see now it created a line so you can kind of see it it's kind of hard to see but it turns yellow as far as when you got the snaps on Let's see, that's probably a better way to show how you can cut. Now, so I'll just turn the snaps back off. So now what I've got here, the way I've done that, I've got two verts in here now with a, another poly by doing that. So that's one. That's probably a better way, I guess, to show uh, being able to cut this up here so if I can more finely, t more finely tune... Uh, what I need to do um, with this, you know, to marry it to, and it's going to take some adjustment to like that, and I probably won't go a whole lot into that right now as far as like that, but just to kind of give you an idea <coughs> of how to go about it, I'll probably save that, I guess, for another stream, but you can see how you can adjust these, you know, to kind of line up to it, you know, as far as applying those types of cuts. So, still trying to maintain it, I guess, as a low poly in comparison. And even as it is right now, it's it's still pretty low poly. Uh, I want to make sure not to save this, but 
So just trying to do that for demonstration purposes. You know, as far as how you work with um, splines that way, as far as you know, being able to apply a vert and or um, a cut, things like that. So this is kind of where we're at um, at this stage of the game, as far as uh, being able to use lidar more effectively. Um, you know, in the <laughs> in the advent of trying to create uh, something uh, that's in real life into uh, virtuality so that's kind of a little bit you know in a nutshell an explanation of where what I'm dealing with I guess at this point you know taking that uh, directly the lidar information instead of a, a low poly and using that information to our advantage now <clears throat> to kind of show this off a little bit more closely you can see that the, <clears throat> the lidar data is set to zero I better double check that so I don't uh, go against myself here. But say, <clears throat> if I select this object, look into property, see I got that set at zero. Okay. Now we've already set this prior to exporting it out from our 3D modeling program uh, to where <clears throat> it matches. Um, the zero plane, I guess you can say, of the not only the ground plane, but the fact that this here. Let me remove just to kind of. I'm going to show this again because <clears throat> this is kind of important. So let me hide this. <clears throat> so the fact that we have our lighter data here. Oh, Why is it selecting it that way? Hold. Not sure why it's doing it that. There we go. So I want to get it back to that point. It's okay. So what we have here, we've when we've exported this out and chunked out what we didn't need, we've checked to see where the low point is on this on this um, this lidar, and the fact that we've come to the determination that the lowest point is on this end of the lidar. So that's what we've set prior to exporting it out into where we have it in our sandbox utility we've got it set to that for, for that to be the low point as far as the pivot goes as far as our the position of our um, yeah our pivot point so when we bring this in here there's no there's next to no adjustment really need really needed on that that end of that so everything else so on this end of the track we're already good to go there's relatively no adjustment into the elevation that we need here we can already see some of this was actually needs to go down you can see how it's bleeding through the lidar and that's <clears throat> what we've been doing uh, for the majority of this stream now that we have the lidar data this is going back to guess to the last week's stream as far as getting this lighter data into our sandbox, um, we now have the option and the opportunity to apply our um, sections that actually manipulate the elevation data, which are these these red lines. And just to put it in a nutshell, for those that are curious to know, these red lines, whatever represent, like I said, uh, the elevation changes. And right now they're still relatively set to zero. There's actually no um, height data applied to them as of yet. These are still relatively flat. So if I bring in the height view here, you can kind of see. Um, actually, in this area I did. This is why this was going into last week's. So this is probably a good example, actually. Um, the fact that, see, we do have some height data in here in this region, at least anyway. Now, as so I go around. I'll just kind of move this. See, this is all flat as we move this around. So let me zoom this out here just to kind of give you an idea. These yellow boundaries are what is showing up in that height view. So picture, if you will, I got this, this section of the track highlighted. That's at zero, so that's flat. So if I go backwards to where this is poking through here, you can see it starts to have elevation. 
and that was what I was kind of showing last week. Uh, just put some, uh, just some uh, placeholder um, X sections in there, the red lines to kind of show. So it's, it's got some height in this region, and it goes to flat. So that's just kind of shows you. So we got all these points in here now, and they're all set to mode absolute, which is basically just up and down. We can adjust these to the LiDAR at this point. We can kind of see it from this view as we move these points. You can see that poking through. So we kind of get an idea of how much we need to adjust <clears throat> these these lines here. And I can move this side by side. But I can pick any one of these points without it even being on. Let's see, I can lift all the, any of the, one of these up to match, I guess, to marry up, I guess, with the LiDAR. Let me grab this point here again so you can see this one, how that was poking through there like that. So you get the idea as far as what we would be next necessarily do next. As far as now that we have the LiDAR information um, in our track. But also the same thing can be done if we were to bring our low poly version of relatively the same information in there. You could use it the same way. Only it's going to be in lower a lower poly format, which could essentially be applied to the, the physical track that you would see in the game as well. In this case, the simulation. So, glad I was able to, uh, you know, kind of show that off a little bit. You know, the fact that uh, I had some people, I guess, to, uh, to necessarily uh, show that off to. But um, even as the archive, uh, for the archive or whatever, that's, that's going to be useful information, hopefully. Uh, to be like so instead of in the past the way we've done it uh, with track builds is to, to really just take uh, educated guesses as to what how much um, height information that we put in there so without having uh, in fact let me do this if I take out and just and this is the way things that have been done in, in the past so if I just go ahead and take this out for example um, and I think I've already saved this one Yes, just making sure. Okay, I can always bring that back. So, the way it has been done in the past is we had no LiDAR information to go on. The only information we had to go on was just the, you know, be it the blueprint uh, for the track or whatever it is you were trying to build and the information that was provided by the... Um, the venue itself as far as like yes it's got 23 degrees of banking in this turn and so on and that's all you really had to go on as far as to, to gauge the the scale as far as how much to apply the fact that we have the option with lidar at this point we can more accurately based on real life information this like i said this comes from the usgs website and these are all uh, point cloud data scans and depending on how dense it is or what have you that information uh, for the height data as far as elevation changes topography exists so instead of doing it <coughs> much in a guessing fashion as we've done in the past like without having LiDAR data we would say okay this track has 23 degrees of banking in the in the turn so what we would essentially end up doing conventionally in the past would be to take this point, adjust it all to 23 degrees, or as close as we could get it, and that was that was our way of being able to apply height data, I guess, to the banking of the track. You know, so, and I'm kind of do this rudimentary, but you kind of get the idea. So this would be the outside, the wall would be here, and you would apply your 23 degrees of banking. I mean, this is, like I said, this is rudimentary, but you get the idea as far as how we've been able to do this in the past and it, it's been so grossly inaccurate um, as far as doing it that way that's the fact that we have this information uh, with the cloud point data is it makes it much easier uh, in all actuality is uh, to, to, to make something that's more accurate and uh, true to life so I don't intend to, to save any of this so <laughs> I'm not too worried about this but yeah, just trying to going over uh, very quickly now at this point. Um, I will go into much more detail 
uh, with this process, I guess, next week for sure. Um, uh, the fact that I have uh, I've been streaming for a little over three hours now, if there isn't any more questions, I'm going to bring this to a close. Uh, but I will leave the floor open, I guess, for anybody that does have any questions for what I've gone over. I know it was a lot of information. I tend to kind of ramble, ramble on a little bit. Um, I try to be as straightforward as possible and try to put it in layman's terms as much as possible. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I do, <coughs> I do wait, I guess, any, any questions that anybody might have, if they do have it, I'll just, like I said, I'll kind of close things up here and, uh, yeah, just leave the floor open. So as I do this, I'm going to close a lot of this stuff out here and, uh, Hopefully, uh, some of y'all might have some questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I've already saved this. So I don't need any of that. Uh, I'm going to reset this. Don't need that, so I'm just going to minimize that. I do have uh, several PTFs now. I'm going to probably clean this out a little bit. Uh, the fact that you will have plenty of uh, plenty of PTFs to go by as far as in your in the process of, I guess of building a scratch build track I've to this point I've got in fact let me bring in what I've got just as of uh, the last couple of weeks here I'm gonna take all these and the only thing I really have to it is just a track man I haven't applied any other whoops I thought I was hitting control Watch what I'm put. Uh, I'm holding down. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna take all these and purge these out of here, and put those in my backup. This is our running copies of that. So yes, I have initial copy there. So I'm gonna write that. Just resort these, and I should have a wide R E, which is our my last one. Beautiful. So I'm gonna copy that one back into. Our ongoing build so that I know that's for next time so when I go ahead and open this um, and you, you can necessarily double click um, on the, the track PTF itself and open it up that way I always find it necessary to go ahead and just um, open it up through either my start menu or my desktop icon so I'm just gonna bring that up and it's still pointed to that same thing so I'm just gonna load this up make sure it still opens Give that a second. One of the things before I forget, um, yeah, one of the things I don't want to forget to mention, I got this as a little footnote. Yeah, so I got this all. Uh, I want to see where my, uh, I think of it, I think I've still got the LiDAR. Yes, well down below. I want to bring that back up to zero and save that again. Yeah, I want to save this again. So I'm going to save this. And I am going to go ahead and just save over that original one. That's all I did. Nothing major. I already know it loads. So that's good. Um, one of the things I did, and I have it as a foot mount in here, and I'm going to uh, use this as a closer I guess for the stream if there is no other questions the camera view okay the initial speed you know as far as using the mouse the mouse primarily in the slew mode is can be pretty pretty fast and sometimes you might want to try to line up with something I guess in particular and by using the right and left mouse buttons, whatever, you, you may not find you want to get in the right spot, you know, with it being that uh, at this speed, at this default speed. The way you can change the speed of the camera, and this is not known by uh, too many, I guess, that uh, have tended to use the sandbox utility for uh, Enter 2003, is to use your plus and minus keys on your numpad. So like if you want to slow it down, and it doesn't really give you an indication there as far as, but the more you hold it down on the minus or plus, it'll adjust the speed. 
So I did a minus, and what will happen is it just stays static. So I'm clicking on the left and right button, it's doing nothing. So if I just hold down the plus, see it speeds back up. So for every press of the minus or the plus, it changes the speed of the camera. So like if you want to use a really slow, you know, slower motion, I guess, to get to a point, that's what you'd want to do as opposed to using the default. So I want to make sure that I get that information out there because uh, I know <laughs> some people get, uh, you know, it's part of maintaining some of their uh, uh, patience, I guess, with doing these types of things. That's what uh, you want to know how to do. So. I'm going to go ahead and clip that. That's a good inf that's good information as well. But um, with all that being said, uh, it was like I said uh, a lot of information um, I put out today we did we got a lot of work done um, with our track build to this point. Uh, what we will necessarily focus on for next week is uh, applying the actual elevation based on our lidar information. Uh, we're going to use what we have here, um, you know, with this uh, chunked out version, I guess, of the LiDAR here. We were, we've been able to get, at least get it in the sandbox, and even the fact uh, uh, that is evident that we have all these jagged edges, that should be no harm or foul. Uh, the fact that we do need to just get the, um, uh, the track spline geometry, I guess, married up to this this lidar so that's what we'll be focusing on for next week uh, when we tackle this so if you find it necessary to want to know how that's done feel free to hit the follow button and don't forget to <clears throat> check this out uh, check out the notifications also on the uh, spline designs facebook group page I'll put that information out there as well. Uh, I also have Twitter. If you, want, if you care to have the tweeters, want to find out that way, or you can feel free to join the Discord and um, some <coughs> I, uh, insert uh, informations in there as well as far as when the streams go live and uh, to include clips and what have you as far as what's gone on uh, in previous in previous streams. So. I want to thank everybody that stopped by this evening. I um, hope you found this information useful, and uh, I hope to see you next week. Uh, feel free to chime in on Wednesdays uh, for Wreckfest uh, uh, Wednesdays, uh, supporting Wooden Warrior Project. Also on Fridays, I do a little bit of farming uh, with Farm Sim 17, as it still stands for now, open uh, till uh, the next couple weeks, at least anyway, when uh, FS19 comes out. Uh, just before Thanksgiving. Looking forward to that, actually. Um, not sure if I will be uh, showcasing uh, FS19 right away as far as once it comes out there because um, there will probably be some uh, some things I might have to adjust as far as uh, being able to stream it. Uh, that's that's I still need to find that out. But, um, yeah, if any of that, uh, those types of things um, interest you and you'd like to see more of uh, what I have to offer, I guess, in the channel on those days. Uh, definitely feel free to hit that follow button, and uh, I hope to see you soon. But for now, thank you for watching, and uh, feel free to stick around, I guess, uh, for the host uh, at the end of the stream. Well, thank you for watching. Bye.